since Islamabad's latest offensive against militants. Sagar Magani has the details. So far, General Joe Dunford says the U.S. has not seen any militants fleeing the offensive and heading into Afghanistan. Pakistan began pounding North Waziristan with airstrikes Sunday. Taliban militants have long found safe haven there, using it as a staging area to attack Afghan and coalition forces. Dunford tells the Associated Press the U.S. is not coordinating military operations with Pakistan, but has increased the amount of intelligence and sharing with the Afghans, who, along with U.S. forces, are ready to handle extremists crossing the border. Sagar Magani at the Pentagon. Tech giants are in court seeking to stop government surveillance of overseas servers. Warren Levinson tells us about the data surveillance lawsuit. In a lawsuit over government surveillance, Microsoft and four other internet companies are seeking to draw a line in the cloud. The companies say they will lose billions if data they store for clients in remote servers. The cloud, in computer parlance, is seen as vulnerable to government snooping. In April, a Manhattan magistrate ruled it was legal for the government to order Microsoft to comply with a search warrant for email it stores in Ireland. The companies, including Apple, Cisco, AT&T, and Verizon, argue such orders violate the Fourth Amendment prohibition on unlawful search and seizure. Prosecutors say resistance undermines law enforcement. The legal battle is expected to be a lengthy one. Warren Levinson, New York. In consumer news, there may soon be more pressure on restaurants and food companies to cut their salt content. Shirley Smith with the details. The Food and Drug Administration is working on voluntary guidelines in an effort to prevent thousands of deaths each year from heart disease and stroke that are tied to high sodium levels. Experts say that we might not notice much taste difference once the guidelines are issued, especially in higher sodium foods like pizza, pasta, bread, and soups. The idea would be to encourage a gradual change so consumers' taste buds can adjust and so companies have enough time to develop lower sodium foods. Shirley Smith, Washington. A Senate panel holds a hearing today on deceptive advertising involving weight loss products. Jerry Bovlander reports on the weight loss scams. The latest government numbers show that in 2012, about 35 percent of all adults in the U.S. were obese, which is why there is such an appetite for weight loss products and approaches. A Senate hearing will look at the deceptive advertising and marketing practices of weight loss products and the FTC's efforts to crack down on them. Among the witnesses, TV's Dr. Oz. Subcommittee Chair Claire McCaskill's release about the hearing says that she will quiz him about his role in the deceptive marketing of weight loss products and what can be done to protect consumers. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Crystal Park. And I'm Rick Young. A heroic broken sewage pipe floods Congress with waste. Johnson & Johnson introduces new leave-in Q-tips. This Thursday, local youth Andrew Robillard told reporters he had no idea why he couldn't wear his Iron Man costume to his grandfather's funeral. Robillard, whose grandfather passed away this week after complications from a stroke, vented his frustration to reporters and noted that his grandpa, quote, probably wouldn't even care if he dressed like Iron Man at the funeral. Iron Man is awesome. I want to wear my Iron Man suit. I am a Man. And in tech news, a news website refers to its users' ceaseless exchange of racial slurs as a discussion. In other news, Guinness World Records promotes the man who can lift 27 pounds with his tongue to editor-in-chief. Thursday's cry is moved up to Wednesday due to a scheduling conflict, and a family watches in silence as dad checks out the waitress. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to take control of the airwaves here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. You just bring up anything you want, 855-450-3733. It has been a pretty a pretty brutal day of shooting for me. And I'm not what at were liberty, you shooting? I'm not at liberty to say oh. uh, the name of the show, but basically... You shot the, a show? The cats... No, there's a show that was in town uh, shooting. Thank you, Mark. Somebody uh, shot you? Shooting video. Uh, just to be clear, we're talking about video. I don't Hilarious. do violent uh, things. So we were shooting. Shooting at, isn't violent. Well, true. If you're not shooting at someone, then I guess it's not violent. 
Um, but anyway, there's a show in town, a, a national comedy show, and they are shooting uh, in Keene, and they are going to be continuing shooting tomorrow. Um, I am uh, under a non-disclosure agreement to not say, but they've disclosed it to so many people today that uh, they didn't tell everybody that to not talk about it. I think they were only really concerned with that in advance of them showing up in town. But still, I'm not uh, feeling like I should uh, reveal that. Mark, I don't know if you had heard about what it is. but Oh, you want me to reveal I, it? I'm not saying didn't... I want you to reveal it. I'm just <laughs> saying I don't know if you've heard what it is, but I think I that have. has gotten out of the bag. So you know, if they imagine asked, uh, one of the, the big national comedy shows. Yeah, indeed. One of um, those. Yeah. Uh, if they asked uh, you not to say, then I feel bound by your okay, there uh, you oath go. To, uh, to not say, and I shan't be saying. They are in town to report on the Robin Hooding. It was initially their intention to report on Robin Hooding, and uh, I turned them on to the war on chalk that's been happening here with a, a, a group that does not like like freedom. They don't like liberty activists. They uh, they come out and they erase the chalkings, the beautiful chalkings in a lot of cases. Yeah, in some cases they really are beautiful putting pictures. Out there. I you know that's that's a shame. So they they cover both the Robin Hooding, the people that are getting saved, people saving others from getting parking tickets, and they covered the chalking aspect. Uh, I was up at six thirty this morning. The crew came here to the LRN.FM studios, and they shot what was at least an hour long interview with me here. They shot with Garrett Ian, one of the other bloggers at Freekeen.com. They're shooting with uh, James, who's also known as Robin Hood, James Cleveland. So it's been a busy day. Uh, they may be trying to shoot with some of the folks from Stop Free Keen tomorrow. It remains to be seen as to whether or not that's that's going to pan out. But uh, it's going to be several weeks, likely, before the post-production wraps up. And so once it does air, we'll certainly let you know about that. Well, what I want to thank you guys for is for keeping Keen weird. Oh, it is going to be uh, pretty funny. I imagine some of the things that we shot today, you know, like the kind of the hero shot where they've got, you got the team and everybody's standing kind of shoulder to shoulder and walking towards the camera, that kind of thing. Really kind of cheesy, uh, fun stuff like that. They shot a, a couple scenes of us singing uh, the protest song and it's it's going to be ridiculous. I lo I'm looking forward to it. Hell, I can always count on you for that, buddy. The, so the toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. There's serious news out there, and Johnny Ray has Ron Paul's response to it. Apparently, troops are going back to Iraq. Of course, they never left, as I understood it. They removed some troops from Iraq uh, and left I don't know how many thousand of them, but now they're adding more. Is that right? Yeah, the word that I have from Fox News is that uh, approximately 300 Armed forces, 300 troops have gone into secure places in and around Baghdad, presumably, that are, are, are our areas, you know, around the embassy. You mean the Camp U.S. Victory. government? Camp Victory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't claim any land in Iraq. Oh, good point. Right. Good point, Ian. And tomorrow, Obama is going to be meeting with some, some of his advisors to determine what they're going to do. What are they moving them in for? Has there been some sort of unrest? What is the excuse for bringing in the 300 troops? There's an insurgent group coming, I, I think, out of Syria, ISIS, or ISIL, as mm -hmm. I like to call them, the Islamic State of Syria and the Levant. Hmm. And they were a group that were, um, that were fighting Bashar al-Assad. Um, I, I think they had some, uh, a little bit of U.S. aid, uh, certainly the aid of, of uh, the encouragement of the U.S. They were fighting Bashar al-Assad in Syria, and now they're coming towards Baghdad. They've come into Iraq, and they've captured Mosul and Tikrit, I think. And um, to, They're working their way south. Right. But they're not well, messing with the Kurds. <laughs> they're, they're a Sunni group. Um, Is their goal to take over? Their goal, I, I assume, is to establish a state that straddles the, uh, the, the land, the Middle East, between the, the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean Ocean. You know, you're going to have to – I'm just thinking from a practical standpoint. I'm not saying these guys were going to win against Assad or anything like that, but you kind of – these days you kind of have to take a state in its entirety rather than a portion of it. How long do you think the – international community, the UN and, and the like, will put up with a portion of Iraq not being under Iraq's control. Uh, I just, I kind of feel like you got to, you got to pick your nation and sweep all the way through rather than uh, this kind of holding a piece of it thing. I don't and understand. Not gonna, well, um, so even if uh, Baghdad can't hold their north, um, the north of Iraq, uh -huh. that's fine. 
But at some point, it, let's say that the, the the Syrian forces, the ISIS forces, hold on to – not the Syrian forces. The ISIS forces hold on to a chunk of northern Iraq uh -huh. for months, perhaps a year. I don't think that the international community, meaning um, the UN and, and those kind of folks, are going to let that slide. In their world, maps have to stay the same. Mm -hmm. And – you can only have the you know those pieces of the map. It'd be one thing if you can go in and um, route the democratically elected. I'm using quotation marks here. Uh, government of Iraq. It'd be another thing entirely to get a chunk of Iraq taken out of Iraq and turned into, I don't know, East Syria or Mohammed Land or whatever the hell you want to call it. Sure, uh, I. It's possible when that time rolls around after those few months roll around, maybe Putin is uh, is is rattling sabers um, up north and uh, NATO and the UN and so forth will be otherwise occupied if that if that flares up into something and it certainly could then the Middle East is going to be an afterthought agreed so wait <clears throat> as far as the um, what's happening in Iraq you've got a group called Isis they used to be helped by the United States now the United States is sending in troops to fight them I should get some facts about that, but the international community, or at least what we were hearing here in the West, the West was against the Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad, for various reasons, and they were encouraging revolt in Syria, and some of the insurgents in Syria were the Islamic State of Iraq and the, and the Levant, and they were their Sunni insurgents, and um, they're related to al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. They were... They had some presence and some agency in Iraq when the U.S. invaded in 2003. They fought against the U.S. forces. Now, when they were pitted against Syria, that we were all making public enemy number one, they were encouraged. Again, I'll have to get some facts to know if they were aided materially by the West. But we were on their side and we were encouraging You mean the them. government, the U.S. government? Yeah. Yes. And now for, for, for what— whatever reasons they're they're going in a different direction and i think they've all yeah mm -hmm. they're going south towards baghdad and they're and, and they're laying waste to to the iraqi army the iraqi oh, wow. army in 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 Mosul, what there is of it um they shot seven there's video and, and there's a claim and and video of the killing of 1700 uh, iraqi soldiers mm -hmm. in execution style um, now, I, I mean, all I can do is report on the pictures I've seen, but it looked for all the world like they put a bunch of people down on the ground and shot the hell out of them. So now the United States is sending more troops over to Iraq to sort of deal with this, even though there were already, I don't know how many troops there, because they didn't clear them all out previously. So they, they left some some caretakers or whatever you want to call them, occupiers. And that huge facility, Camp Victory. Still there, still right. operating? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's probably quite a few people then. Right. Now, now ISIS, I, I heard, was about 5,000 strong, and they routed a 30,000-man contingent of Iraqi army oh, wow. who, who fled Mosul, dropped their weapons, stripped out of their uniforms, and ran. And now ISIL, uh, ISIL's got a cache of supplies that are without a doubt provided by the U.S. government. Mm. Because we gave the material to the Iraqi army, the Iraqi army left it anyone. behind. No, I, I didn't give. I didn't give them any material. I don't want to see fighting and, and violence. But you mean the the U.S. government? Um, U.S. embassy retained a ba um, U U.S. retained an embassy in Baghdad with some seventeen thousand personnel, consulates in Basra, Mosul, Kirkuk. This is after they supposedly left. Have a thousand staff each, and between four thousand to five thousand defense contractors. So twenty five thousand people. More coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. Can education be separated from the state? Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. These transcripts are given to potential employers as proof of coursework. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of getting a transcript associated with your name, you can obtain cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Then, apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your government-sanctioned name. Since mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously, you can be sure that you will not be discriminated against or shown favoritism due to your race, gender, political or religious views, and so on. There is only one factor by which you 
will be judged. Your ability to reason. Be at the vanguard of separating education from the state by visiting mathgate.info. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever you want. Just dial on in toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Hey, join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Coming up, Ron Paul is responding to the Iraqi troop increase that Johnny Ray was telling us about. We haven't actually started that. We will get to Ron Paul's statement here in a moment. We're just kind of talking generally about what's going on in Iraq with this group, uh, the ISIS group, I guess they were called. They, they've they been apparently taking over towns. There's been some apparent mass murders, allegedly. So we'll continue with that here in moments. Your calls and thoughts. Welcome at 855-450-FREE. I want you to think about your teeth for a minute. Um, are they as white as they could be? Are they? Are, is your mouth as healthy as it could be? Because I have found a new product. It's called My Magic Mud. It's a completely natural remedy for brushing your teeth. There's no fluoride in it. It has. It's made of uh, uh, charcoal, activated charcoal, and uh, bentonite clay, and it 
really has really has worked for me. Now, I, you don't use it every single application, but what it does is it gets in there and sort of gets all those bacteria. They they, they bond with the um, the activated charcoal, and it just sucks them right out of your mouth. I don't have that film on my teeth in the morning. It, it just doesn't happen anymore. I'm using it about every other day, and I initially when I got it, got it, I used it daily. Now it's very unusual because it uh, it, it it's black. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you see yourself brushing with black stuff, and it just it's it's a little disconcerting. But nonetheless, this stuff really really works. It's go to mymagicmud.com and check it out. You can uh, see. Uh, the biological dentist, Dr. Griffin Cole, and he has a video there where he explains some of the benefits of My Magic Mud. Um, it was made by Jessica Armand. She's a liberty-loving homeschool mother of three, and she'll be attending Pork Fest with us in just a, a few days' time with plenty of jars on sale there. But if you're not going to Pork Fest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T, Pork Fest, you can uh, go to MyMagicMud.com, and I recommend, highly recommend, that you get a jar. If I I can't recommend highly enough that you get a jar of this stuff because it's really amazing. It lifts the stains right off your teeth. In one application, you'll see a difference. In four, my mouth, you know, my teeth were as white as they're supposed to be. Not that kind of chemically weird white. Uh, by the way, it's completely natural, so you could swallow this stuff if that's what you want to do. Um, and matter of fact, uh, the recommendation is is that you brush your teeth with it at night so it can sit on your teeth throughout the night. Um, MyMagicMud.com. All right. Toll-free number is 855-453. We'll get the words from Ron Paul here in just a moment from Johnny Ray. And first, we go to the phones with your calls and thoughts. Tom is in Nashua, New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live, Tom. Yeah. In 2012... Do you know how many people voted for Gary Johnson for president? Is it, it was over a million, over, wasn't it? Yeah, just over a million. 1.2 million persons That's great. voted for Gary Johnson. Now, uh, yes, uh, look at uh, the more recently out in Las Vegas, the Battle of Las Vegas, back on June 8th of this year, two people participated in the battle against cops and took out two enemy officers. Okay. So while you're talking about uh, what's going on, uh, the effectiveness of one or the other, it's not really valid because uh, going to, there's so many more people using the process, and arguably it's not doing any good either because uh, Gary Johnson did not get elected. But uh, as for whether uh, that's the only peaceful way, the only way to, uh, to seek peace, or that there's some kind of a contradiction between seeking peace and fighting back against the government, I would point out that in the Battle of Las Vegas, uh, those two cops, those two violent, dangerous, brutal goons, suddenly became very peaceful. And if you go about it your way, where, oh, here's there's some cops that are uh, getting out of control here. Let's videotape them and present evidence and work through the system. Cops get all burned up and hot under the collar when they catch humans videotaping them, but the cops cool off in a refrigerator. Now, wow, in, oh God! Now in in Las Vegas, in in Clark County, Nevada, the voter list is available online for anybody to just go ahead and download. And if it does not contain the cops' addresses, I would have to point out that doesn't really do the cops a whole lot of good against an attack like what happened back on June 8th. I'd have to well, point that out. It's not like you have they have police officer next to their name on the voter rolls. I mean, you'd have to know who you were looking for, right? Anyway, yeah, they would have to know which one they're looking for, and it only uh, protects the cop from the kind of people that think that they have to track down the exact same Tom, what office. is it that you want to see? Do you want to see just mass murders of police happening all around the country? Is that... What you think would, would I, want, uh, I want liberty and justice for all. Let me let me explain the kind the way you people go about. But all it, you ever call about is things. is uh, killing cops. I mean, that's almost everything you call about, with the exception of uh, drunk driving uh, laws, voter rolls, and voter rolls, which you've actually mixed in the voter rolls tonight into your advocacy of or your your suggestive comments about uh, killing police. What is it that you want to see? Do you want to see people just uh, ice in the police? Is that what you believe is going to lead to to freedom and liberty? I want to see liberty and justice for all, and I would point out that the way uh, you people go about it, you get these small victories, like look at the repeal of alcohol prohibition. That only uh, changed it from prohibited to 
heavily regulated. Mm, sure. There's state option and county option. And if you're over 21 in a wet county, then those people see the, the pendulum stops because those people stop activism because mm-hmm. they, they don't what they give wanted. a fire truck about somebody else's rights. During the Vietnam War, you know, millions of teenagers became politically active and they got the drinking age lowered in some states and they also got the voting age lowered, but the voting age didn't do them any good in the 1978 referendum in Michigan on whether to raise the drinking age back to 21 because they're vastly outnumbered by uh, depraved bigots who hate everybody under 21. And so well, they they can vote all they want. It didn't do any good because uh, it still passed 57 to 43 percent. Now, if on election night there had been a major uh, revolt and, you know, uh, extermination, not just against the police, but also uh, customs inspectors that are preventing teenage uh, 19-year-old and 20-year-old people from bringing booze out of Ontario into Michigan, then a few months later, when Governor Hugh Gallon got this legislation here in New Hampshire on whether to raise the drinking age from 18 to 20, he might not have been so eager to sign it because it would have served as a powerful notice that uh, he could wake up the next morning with no law enforcement protection. And it only would require as many cops as the enemy would want the freedom fighters to exterminate because, you know, as soon as they don't want any more cops exterminated, then, see, this would be total victory. But, Tom, the difference here is... The, the difference here is is you're not talking about um, you know one issue uh, because people don't seem to be willing to rise up over one issue and and I think that it's possible if you saw civil unrest over one issue that you might see some uh, movement in that direction but these people these freedom fighters as you call them out in Vegas uh, the, the Vegas killers they didn't want one thing they just wanted to kill cops and they were successful I mean for killing two but they didn't <laughs> their their exchange was uh, two for two and one co lateral damage. Um, no one considers that a victory. Thanks for the uh, call, Tom. Toll-free number tonight, 855-453-FREE. Uh, totally disagree with his perspective. More on the way. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live, 855-453-FREE. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Henry Ford once said, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. Alex Castle here, the national account executive at GCN. I have the ability to customize a national radio campaign based on your budget while targeting your demographic. Contact me to find out how national radio can help your business be more profitable at 877-996-4327, extension 177. That's 877-996-4327, extension 177, and help me help you bring your business to the next level. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidotti. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. You want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com
You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We'll hear uh, what Ron Paul has to say about the increased... Number of troops in Iraq, why and what he has to say about that. We'll continue that discussion. Your calls are welcome as well on whatever topic you'd like to discuss tonight. 855 free Plus coming up, the NSA says that it can't comply with a court order. We'll explain that. Mark has that story. Again, we've got toll-free lines brought to you by ProXPN, 855 free and Skype, of course. Skype on in at username LRN.FM. Need focus? Feeling fatigued? Trying to get that extra edge? When it counts, there's just so much going on all at once in our lives these days. Every moment, it seems like we can't keep track of everything and we're getting tired. Don't you wish there was something that could get you out of the rut and give you the focus you need and help you get things done? Well, there may be. But Daffodil from ModUp.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering them multiple benefits, including... A double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off of fatigue and greater focus overall so that you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out modup.net and look into it for yourself. They offer fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. And modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. So you can order from modup.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. And to make the deal even sweeter, use the code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So use code FTL. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio program and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if your local prescription requirements apply in some way or whatever the laws might be. So please, we recommend you look into it for yourself, but we're sure you'll find modup.net offers great service and great price. It's modup.net code FTL. All right, toll-free numbers, 855-450-FREE. Jumping right back into your phone calls, and then we'll uh, hear from Ron Paul in moments. David, you're on the line in San Francisco, and you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, greetings. Yeah, we've got a beautiful day out here. Hey, you know, um, this brand new, new and improved war, uh, I was just going to remind people about uh, that big bad sequester that we had last uh, autumn. You remember uh, the neocons were trying to make sure that there was never going to be a budget in the Obama administration unless they did a sequester. And, what are you uh, talking? What's a sequester? You don't remember the sequester? <laughs> this is when the government had to shut down and they had the parks. Oh, uh, the shutdown. Yeah, well, it wasn't a, they called a cut, cut. They called it a sequester for oh. whatever reason. Okay. Yeah. And so that sequester demanded that uh, America had to tighten its belt. And so everything. Everything was going to, all the schools and libraries and roads and bridges and everything were going to take a 10% cut. Yeah, that's why well, they had uh, they had security guards to keep people out of the national parks while they were shut down. 
That's right, yeah. And so then, uh, right afterward, you don't see the libraries and schools and bridges and roads and whatnot uh, doing heavy lobbying, but you definitely see the military doing it, because just a month or so later, uh, we were not only going to go to war with Russia, but we were going to go to war with uh, uh, China, China and Russia at the same time. Now, why would you go to uh, war? I mean, why would somebody want to do that? Well, in order to get their budget back. So oh, it, you're talking about the government. The, I thought you said you were He did say the military. To, yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah, he said mili- we. He also, I know. He said we, <laughs> Ian is in a war. war. Ian has his own war, um, and his war is on we. Yeah, I, it's really frustrating because I don't like being included, and I don't think you would go to – You're not. you don't seem like a warmongering kind of guy, David. I'm, I'm glad. Oh, I'm definitely not. And as a matter of fact, then if you start looking I, – I think I've talked to you all about uh, Saudi Prince Bandar. Yes, and all yeah. of the, the most evil stuff that he's been doing, all of those bombings throughout the Middle East in the last autumn, uh, you know, he was the guy that provided the chemical gas that was in Syria, and he was trying to trick America into uh, going to war for him. And so uh, basically Saudi Prince Bandar, if you just do a basic Google search of either ISIS and Saudi Prince Bandar or the ISIS also goes by another their name, and that's ISIL, uh, instead of saying Syria, they say the Levant, which is basically the same area. And uh, he created them. So we've, uh, you know, the Saudi prince Bandar is pretending to... You're saying Bandar <laughs> created IS- ISIS or ISIL? There's evidence for what he says. Absolutely. In okay. fact, I even just saw some in a Wall Street Journal article uh, earlier today. Um, yeah, this guy is... Uh, this, this, I, this is all a fiction in order to create a budget for the military-industrial complex. They mm-hmm. want their money back, and the roads and bridges aren't doing lobbying. But the military so we need a new group. There needs to be a new enemy. Yeah, good point yeah. tonight, David. Thanks for the call. I appreciate sure. hearing from you. 855-450 free. Johnny Ray, you sounded like you were going to jump in there. I did when you were talking about the correcting, when Mark was talking about how you like to correct people when they're, they're referring to the U.S. government, but they say we. It's a pet peeve of mine. And uh, you got me on that several times, and I appreciate it. A lot of times I'll be listening to some pundit somewhere talking about we this and we that, and I noticed it then, but mm-hmm. for whatever reason, I, I came out with it myself. Well, it's uh, it's it's in it's the force language. Of habit. Um, and to some extent, I agree with where Ian um, you know, says this, because you should say the United States government instead of we, yep. but at the same time, I think that you're propagating anything else is propaganda. I'm part agree, of the problem. Right, you, I, it's worse than voting. If, if I'm, st- we, I'm supporting the system. Yes. If you use the term <laughs> we to describe the government, you're propagating the propaganda that we're the government. This is one of the favorite lines of the people who support the state to excuse the violence of the state. Oh, well, we're the. If you don't like it, you should just run for office. We are the government. And I find that really offensive because I'm not the government. I'm not really interested in controlling others, even though I am running for uh, governor of uh, the state of New Hampshire. At the moment. And don't worry, you <laughs> won't be Democrat. controlling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think, even if I did actually, by some crazy, ludicrous scenario, win. I don't think I'd, I'd be allowed to take office because I couldn't swear an oath to the state. Has anyone ever, if you guys ever read the oath of office? I Not only do you swear an oath to the state of New Hampshire, but you also swear an oath to the United States government. So two oaths to two states, neither of which I'm a big fan of. Certainly. Wait a second. You said you're a Quaker. You can't swear an oath at all, my right. friend. Well, you could <laughs> affirm. I'm sure you could affirm the, the statement. But either way. Um, I don't feel comfortable swearing. You just write your own vows, anything. buddy. Well, that's what I would try to do, but I highly <laughs> doubt. You know, I would be happy to uh, swear an oath to liberty or something like that, uh, but you know, not the state. You could so. swear an oath to the people of New Hampshire and the people of the United States government. The uh, people of the United States. I don't know what that means to swear an oath to those people. Why not? Does it mean they get to tell me what to do? Because that's not cool either. <laughs> So You're taking over their job, working for the governorship. So I mean, to some yeah, extent, you the reason for them. why I would be elected would be to secede from the United States and to that's legalize. the best thing for the United the people of the United States is for New Hampshire to secede. That totally is. Although it brings me back to another question I wanted to ask earlier. I actually made a note about this in our pre, uh, prior discussion. You were talking about Mark how uh, the, over in Iraq these uh, ISIL or ISIS characters uh-huh. are trying to take over a portion of the state, and that the UN wouldn't stand for that. 
So would that mean that the UN would, in your mind, invade New Hampshire if New Hampshire seceded? Because then it would be a portion. No, I was talking about, um, you know, you have to, the lines on maps are important to these people. Mm -hmm. And New Hampshire, I think, uh, could make the argument that it is a, um, for one, New Hampshire would be doing it through some kind of legislative or uh, popular process. It wouldn't be through force of arms. Um, Secondarily, New Hampshire would be taking the whole state as opposed to mm. a portion of the state. You know, Cheshire County isn't trying to secede, I see. just New Hampshire. Um, and so, no, I don't think so, because of those, certainly the dent of those two things. Toll-free number tonight. You're welcome to comment on whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Chris in Connecticut. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Johnny Ray, and Mark. Hey, good evening, guys. It's my Thanks. pleasure to be speaking with you welcome, from sir. Occupied Connecticut. Hey, I just wanted to... Uh, comment on that last caller who talked about um let's say the military powers wanting to secure a budget for the future and i think he might have been right on because i've been watching some of the coverage of this uh, iraq incident over there and i noticed that there was large columns of like those al-qaeda isis troops just kind of roaming down from the south in a very orderly tight group fashion you know did anybody else see that I didn't. No, I didn't see that video. If you've got more, Chris, you can hang on, share your observations here in moments. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Plus, we still have yet to find out what Ron Paul thinks about all this. He's always got something interesting to say. And you can share your thoughts here. 855-450-FREE or Skype in at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Ron Paul's response to the Iraq troop increase coming up here, 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. And uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies, that is what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. You are given the real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com and get signed up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. We go right back to Chris talking about uh, his perspective on uh, the Iraqi situation. What else did you want to share tonight, Chris? All right, Ian. Yeah, I was just uh, simply talking about, as of this weekend, it was all over the major media networks, and they were showing columns of those rebel troops descending into Iraq in a very orderly, marching, tight-grouped fashion, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And I guess you guys hadn't seen that at all from what, what I last heard before the break. But at any rate, it just instantly appeared to me that they would have been easy targets if somebody really wanted to take them out. I'm not saying yay or nay on that. And furthermore, I was really perplexed. These troops walking in tight formation under heavy threat of drone death from the NATO forces in Iraq, where specifically in the 90s there was what was known as the Highway of Death, where you know the United States government just annihilated the Iraqi army on this highway stretch. In the first Gulf War, I would just think that would be in every one of those freedom fighters' heads as they marched down there. It was almost as if they knew they weren't going to get hit from, That's from interesting. aerial. Yeah, so you what know? you're suggesting is that this ISIS group that was walking— was ISIS that you're saying was walking into yeah. the town? Uh, that had they actually been concerned about being attacked by the United States government, they wouldn't have been walking, you know, single file or double file or whatever down the road, uh, bunching walking. up essentially. <laughs> they walked in. So yeah, basically, they they seem quite flagrant. Is all all I was saying. Anybody there should know of the highway of death. I would imagine that's on all their vernacular and tone. You know. Interesting observation, Chris. Thanks for sharing it tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. We've got Billy in North Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live uh, with Ian, Johnny, Ray, and Mark. Hi, Billy. Hi. Hey. What's on your mind? I like the, but I just want to talk about bacon. Bacon. Oh, a lot of people are big fans of bacon. What do you, how do you feel about it? It's good, mm-hmm. but it's fattening. I don't know. Is it really? Because don't people lose weight on bacon? I mean, isn't that the, what is it, the paleo diet or something? It depends on who you listen to, Billy, um, as to whether or not carbs make you fat or fat makes you fat. I think carbs make you fat. I think sugar makes you fat, and bacon is not fat. Sugar is uh, no doubt uh, very, very bad when it comes to uh, weight gain. And, you know, some people, some nutritionists have called it poison. Oh, Billy, what do you think about that? And little children. And uh, sugar is definitely the little children. Sugar is what children? That it's fattening. Sugar. Especially for little children. (laughs) Good points, no, Billy. Sugar can make uh, neighbor little kids annoying. It certainly oh. can, Billy. It's an astute observation. Anything else you want to share with us tonight? Um, I called up a while back ago on what it takes to be a radio talk show host. Yeah, I that was you. Know. Okay. Yeah, um, I started my own YouTube channel now, so. Oh, excellent! Um, and how would people find that, I, Billy? Uh, it's under my name. It's William Acrivos, A K R I V O S. Very good. Good luck with the channel. Appreciate the call tonight. The toll-free number is 
four fifty free, and that is the toll freedom brought to you by Pro XPN. Let's jump into it, Johnny Ray. We've uh, teased it. People have commented, but we haven't yet heard what Ron Paul has to say about this ISIS Iraq troop increase. June seventeenth, two thousand fourteen, by Ron Paul. Haven't we already done enough damage in Iraq? In 2006, I invited the late General Bill Odom to address my Thursday congressional luncheon group. General Odom, a former NSA director, called the Iraq War the greatest strategic disaster in American history Hmm. and told the surprised audience that he could not understand why Congress had not impeached the president for pushing this disaster on the United States. Wow. That Yeah, that doesn't really do it for me too much. I mean, he was around with Reagan and... I don't know. All the presidents should be impeached as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Well, this guy is claiming that this was the single greatest strategic error and that because of that, or I suppose because of something else, that he should have been impeached. I mean, he's taking a different stance than you and I might take. Uh, True enough. History continues to prove the general's assessment absolutely correct. In September 2002, arguing against a U.S. attack on Iraq, I said the following on the House floor. No credible evidence has been produced that Iraq has or is close to having nuclear weapons. No evidence exists to show that Iraq harbors al-Qaeda terrorists. Quite to the contrary, experts on this region recognize Hussein as an enemy of the al-Qaeda and a foe to Islamic fundamentalism. Unfortunately, Congress did not listen. Mm. As we know, last week, the second largest city in Iraq, Mosul, fell to the al-Qaeda allied Islamic state in Iraq and Syria. Here's what... This fascinates me. The largest city in Iraq, Mosul. Now, second tra- largest. Second largest. Second largest. Baghdad be the largest. Do you have a number on on that? Uh, give me some the size kind of, of the city. No, I can pull it up. Yeah, I'm just trying to imagine something the size of, I don't know, Miami. Uh, that's the 11th radio market in the United States. I have some kind of clue as to how big this thing is. Um, I'm trying to imagine Miami. Three million people in Mosul. Mosul's bigger than Miami. Um, it's as big as the Broward, uh, you know, the, the the whole Broward, Palm Beach, Dade area. I think, um, falling to five thousand troops. Those, five thousand. Were they armed? all there together, or are they spread out the five thousand? I, I are they imagine, in different cities. Or are they all taking Mosul at once? Uh, the, well, they've moved from city to city, so I, I guess they must be leaving troops in place mm-hmm. to some extent. I, I, I would guess they're mostly coherent. That the the estimate that I got, I boosted a little bit. The estimate that I originally got was three to five thousand. Apparently, that estimate is a is a gross underestimate. Okay. So there's more. Yeah, because I just can't imagine that many people taking you know that taking that many. I just can't imagine it. Mm. Try, try to imagine going around New York City and taking it with little two- or five-man squads. And how many of those? you got a hundred of those. What? Hmm. Well, Iraq is governed by uh, Shiites mostly. I think the, the Western powers tried to, when they reformed the country, I think they tried to get sort of a cultural mix, but mostly dominated by Shia. And Iraq and Mosul... The North Iraq is Sunni. Uh, Shia Islam is mostly based in Iran and southern Iraq, and and most of the rest of of, of Islam is Sunni. Uh, Shia Islam represents about fifteen percent, so okay. they're 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 that's a real Iran, minority. But that's Iran and Iraq and por- portions of Iraq basically is where the Shias, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, and this is really sort of what it comes down to is is that there's. This is a long-running dispute uh, with the uh, Shias and the mm-hmm. uh, Sunnis, and th- this is you know why I said on the show for years and years um, what they should have done with Iraq is split it up along uh, cultural lines into three countries and leave it alone. But George Bush said that he wasn't going to do that to Turkey in order to be able to run their bombers out of there. Uh, pursuant to that religious divide, the U.S. is considering bringing Iran in to help in Iraq. Very strange. Where they're very in talks. Bizarre. Strange bedfellows, huh? Well, yeah. Um, so U.S. allies are the ones that have funded this uh, these ISIS group. The you know the the U.S. citizens were told to support you know mentally or whatever this uh, this group in in um, Syria. But now um, we want to fight them in Iraq and by teaming up with our old enemies, Iran. I just don't know. Is this the axis of evil? Because I'm not sure. When is Israel going to come in and drop bombs on everybody? 
Last week, an al-Qaeda that has not been in Iraq before our 2003 invasion threatened to move on the capital, Baghdad, after it easily overran tens of thousands of Iraqi military troops. The same foreign policy experts who lied us into the Iraq war are now telling us we must reinvade Iraq to <laughs> deal with the disaster caused by their invasion. Of course. They cannot it never, ends. it never ends. They cannot admit they were wrong about the invasion being a cakewalk that would pay for itself. So they accomplished. Yeah. They'll welcome us with flowers and so, open arms. So they want to blame last week's events on the 2011 U.S. withdrawal from Iraq. But the trouble started with the 2003 invasion itself, not the 2011 troop withdrawal. Anyone who understands cause and effect should understand this. The Obama, in, in, the Obama administration has said no option except for ground troops is off the table to help the Iraqi government in this crisis. We should not forget, however, that the administration does not consider special forces or the CIA to be boots on the ground. ground troops. So mm -hmm. we may well see Americans fighting in Iraq again. Uh, well, who are the 300? They, if there's 300 troops going back, are those special forces or are they cooks? I mean, what are those 300 troops? I would imagine that they're doing something to bolster uh, embassies and that sort of thing mm, would be okay. my guess. Military I police? I don't know. Okay. Um, but I would guess. I, I'm just trying to imagine. You know, it's a it's a whole new world with this these drones. Mm. What if there's a, you know, a thousand drones blackening skies of Iraq. Uh, it's going to be an entirely different war than, than what it's been like before. We will continue. Your thoughts are welcome. Toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. More from Ron Paul? Come yes. On. All right, we'll get more from Ron Paul on the ISIS-Iraq <laughs> situation. The toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. Hour number two is on the way. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my gold bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the gold bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body, and new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Now is the time for new flooring in your home because Lumber Liquidators has every floor on sale with the end of quarter clearance sale on right now. Get huge savings on all flooring like quick click pre-finished hardwood for $169 a square foot, solid hand-scraped horizontal bamboo for $179, and this week and only get 8mm cherry laminate for just $0.69. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest to you. Special 24-month financing is available. But hurry, this end of quarter clearance sale ends Monday, June 30th. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, June 17th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,265 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $600. Antiwar.com reports, Speaking at a press conference ahead of a National Security Council meeting, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko announced he intends to propose a ceasefire with the Eastern Separatist factions. Poroshenko said the ceasefire would officially be offered later this week and would only come after the military had seized the Russian border back from the rebels. 
Poroshenko argued that it would be irresponsible to make a ceasefire while the border remains open and said that while he was open to amnesty for protesters, it would not include those involved in violence in the East. So far, there is no response from the separatists on the prospect of a ceasefire, but they seem unlikely to willingly give up without some concessions made ahead of time. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports U.S. security officials prepared on Monday to brief President Obama on options to counter militants threatening Baghdad as Iraqi Prime Minister Nuri al-Malaki came under increased U.S. pressure to curb religious partisanship in his government. Obama notified Congress the United States was deploying up to 275 military personnel to provide support and security for U.S. personnel and the country's embassy in Baghdad after militants seized control of the northern part of the country. Brett McGurk, the State Department point man on Iraq, and U.S. Ambassador Stephen Beecroft met with Malaki in Baghdad on Monday as part of a U.S. effort to prod leaders of Iraq's Shiite-dominated administration to govern in a less sectarian manner. U.S. officials also talked to Iranians about the situation in Iraq on the sidelines of Iran nuclear negotiations in Vienna on Monday, according to sources familiar with the situation. One U.S. official said, These engagements will not include military coordination or strategic determination about Iraq's future over the heads of the Iraqi people. We will discuss how ISIS threatens many countries in the region, including Iran, and the need to be inclusive in Iraq and refrain from pressing a sectarian agenda. Obama said last week that before he ordered any use of U.S. military forces against militants from the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, he would want to see some sign that Maliki was taking steps to broaden the Shiite-dominated government. The stunning onslaught by ISIS militants, joined by disaffected Sunni leaders alienated by Maliki's government, is threatening to dismember Iraq and unleash all-out sectarian warfare across the crescent of the Middle East, with no regard for national borders that the fighters reject. U.S. officials speaking on the condition of anonymity said Obama and his top advisors had not yet decided on a specific package of political demands to be presented to the Iraqi minister, FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The Sydney Morning Herald reports Chinese artist Gyo Jian arrived in Sydney this morning after being expelled from China. His deportation came after he completed a pool table sized Tiananmen Square artwork slathered with 160 kilograms of pig meat. The artwork was intended as a private reflection of the 25th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square democracy protest in Beijing that ended with the army opening fire on unarmed students, killing hundreds and possibly more. Open discussion of the 1989 event is still banned in China. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new medical study on the effects of marijuana use confirms that everyone knows you're high and that you'll never stop feeling like this. Everyone can smell the marijuana on your breath and on your clothes. Everyone is laughing at you. Additionally, the in-depth report reveals that despite trying to act cool, you're definitely laughing too much and everyone is messing with you. Your parents know you're high, your friends know you're high, strangers on the street know you're high. If you're young and you smoke marijuana, you will probably never be able to find a job.
And if you're an adult, you will most likely be fired. If you hear a noise, that's probably the police, and you're probably going to jail. While previous studies suggested that it's all good and that we're all made of the same stuff that makes stars, new research indicates that your brain got broken and you shouldn't have done this. Doctors say the study raises important questions such as, what if that wasn't just marijuana and how are you going to get home? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial in toll-free here. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm. Send a quick contact request. It will be approved with you tonight in the studio. It's Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. Johnny has been sharing with us Ron Paul's statement, as it appears over at lourockwell.com, I just posted the link on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can check that out when you get a chance. But we're reading through his statement about the Iraq troop increase. Apparently, they're sending over 300 troops uh, or around 300 troops back to Iraq uh, in response to this ISIS group, which you said was Sunni. Is that right? The right. ISIS is Sunni, and so the northern portion of Iraq is Sunni, and that's Sunni, and yeah. that's where they're taking over from the establishment. They're they're physically sacking cities or something like that. They're sacking. Do you know what that means? That's, oh, that's that raising. Well, they are <laughs> doing raising. that. They they captured about four hundred thirty million from the bank in Mosul. Okay, um, sacking usually you know has a strong connotation of rape. Um, oh really? Yeah. And so I mean. Yeah, I mean, yes, they're taking money, uh, absolutely. They're um, killing soldiers, what they're claiming are soldiers. Mm -hmm. And they have some proof that they got some soldiers. There's no doubt about it. Um, But... You know, like, I don't know. When I say sack, I'm thinking fires, rapes, you know, the the Visigoths running around waving battle axes above their heads. So then they're just taking out the government agents. They're targeting government agencies. Is that the idea? I think so. Yeah, because largely what they're the reason they've had any kind of success in taking these a city of three million plus the other cities to create and the other cities that they've taken with a, a small force. We don't know how big that force is. Numbers have been as low as three thousand thousand and um, mm-hmm. higher uh, and the reason they're able to take uh, you know cities with those kind of tiny little numbers is is that most people there uh, are sunnis and if they're not pleased with the invasion they're at the very least don't feel like it's worth dying over a government that doesn't represent them so let's continue with ron paul's thoughts it is also likely that the administration will begin shipping more weapons and other military equipment to the iraqi army in the hopes that they might be able to address the ISIS invasion themselves. After, yeah, that's likely. After years of U.S. training costing as much as $20 billion, it is unlikely the Iraqi army is up to the task. Judging from the performance of the Iraqi military as the ISIS attacked, much of that money was wasted or stolen. A big U.S. government weapons transfer to Iraq will no doubt be favored by the U.S. military-industrial complex, which stands to profit further from the Iraq meltdown. This move will also be favored by those in Washington who realize how politically unpopular a third U.S. invasion of Iraq would be at home, but who want to, quote, do something in the face of the crisis. Shipping weapons. I understand why people want to do something. I hate seeing um, I, I hate seeing this kind of violence ar- around the world. And, you know, oftentimes we don't go where we don't see the violence. But when, uh, frankly— or I should say the United States government doesn't go where the United States mm. people don't see the violence. But I I don't see this as coming out well. And the reason is is that regions have to mature on their own. They're going to decide what kind of government they need themselves. And this, this Iraq situation is full-on evidence. The United States can't go in and dump a bunch of money and, and troops on a problem and make and fix it. Yeah, that's how governments operate in in every sphere and every endeavor. They're always putting the cart before the horse. They they think that because New York City and other big cities have big stadiums, they think if they build a stadium, then their their city will will grow and and profit thereby. But in fact, the, the, those cities usually have these stadiums and these amenities because of because demand. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. But th these things come organically, and if you if you just dump money into something, you know, without real support for whatever it is you're trying to do, then it 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 doesn't come about because that stuff's just not real. And and these weapons, I heard last week that uh, Boko Haram in Nigeria had benefited from from materials stolen when the U.S. was hounded out of Libya. Wouldn't doubt it. Now, Boko Haram, is that the group uh, kidnapping the teenage girls? Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, continuing, Please. a big U.S. government weapons transfer to Iraq will no doubt be favored by the U.S. military industrial complex, which stands to profit further from the Iraq meltdown. Shipping weapons may be an action short of war, but it usually leads to war. And as we have already seen in Iraq and Syria, very often these weapons fall into the hands of the al-Qaeda we are supposed to be fighting. Because of the government's foolish policy of foreign interventionism, the U.S. is faced with two equally stupid choices. Either pour in resources to prop up an Iraqi government that is, clo that is a close ally with Iran, or throw our support in with al-Qaeda in Iran, as we have done in Syria. I say we must follow a third choice. Ally with the American people and spend not one more dollar or one more life attempting to remake the Middle East. Haven't we done enough damage already? Good question. I think so. And Iraq really should show to this generation what you can get with, with military arms these days. I think I think military solutions are just are just going away. They're gonna be a thing of the past. And from Vietnam and up, it's been a bunch of really unsuccessful stuff, right? Wasted lives and wasted money. No good. I think done you can throw Korea. Lots of bad. I think you can throw Korea into on that one too. Um, South Korea, arguably, in in pretty good. Sh yeah, I don't know. Certainly Vietnam on right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I'm such a libertarian fundamentalist that I wouldn't argue. I, I would argue against every war, probably including the Revolutionary War. I always think there's a better option, but the but it's just it's just f so flagrantly baseless the reasons we go to war now and and well it's, there's a boogeyman i mean they're, it's scary they're doing something bad the united states is the world's police so something must be done therefore it's up to the united states of course there's all kinds of dictators doing terrible things around the world but you know the u.s doesn't invade those places uh they only focus on the middle east where the oil happens to be right you know, Johnny Ray, thinking about uh, what you've said there, I I have to take a different position. I wonder. We have some pretty smart listeners who know a lot about history. I wonder if they'll come they'll come to your aid or mine on this one. Um, I'm going to say that communication sucked in 1776. Uh -huh. um, that uh, you had you know some guy who went to the center of town and read something, <laughs> you know, and that was news. That's what passed for news. Some newspapers, things like that, mm -hmm. and that um, as a result. You know, war is a form of communication, a really crappy form of communication, but it is a form of communication. Now we have better forms of communication that allow this very um, this this, uh, uh, you know, bad form of communication, this uh, kind of thick and unwieldy form of communication that's outdated it. But I think that um, you know, I think that wars it may be arguably that wars were necessary at some point or another to throw off tyranny but now that we have better forms of communication to do it so i'm going to argue for the revolutionary war uh beyond that i kind of get in the weeds I, I don't have another one that i like well johnny i'm curious what would you like to see what is an alternative to you regarding the revolutionary conflict what would be another way to Come about that. It's a tough question, Ian. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said he had some ideas, maybe. So. Well, th two things come to mind, and I don't know if this necessarily addresses your question, but but number one, we may have had slavery less, or, or we may have had uh, slavery might have been abolished in this land prior to when it was, if we had remained subjects of the king. That's the, probably a true statement. Uh, England had abolished slavery by the time of the uh, the Civil War. And the second thing I forgot. Hmm. All right. So if slavery. So you're, what you're suggesting is that had people just let it alone and gone ahead and paid the king, that slavery might have been abolished sooner. Yeah. At the, and the second thing that I was going to say was simply that the kind of quote tyranny that we suffered under King George is is uh, uh, is nothing 
compared to what we suffer under President Obama. It's true, but who's to say that things would have not gotten worse with under the King system either? Over well, time? I think that you can look at um, what England looked like in the early 1900s and see um, that there's some truth to what Johnny Ray says. Like even if this had been. Um, if, if this had been England, that there would have been, in many ways, much more freedom. But you kind of kind of wonder, the United States started some revolutions around the world, too. The French Revolution, chief among them. We come back with more. Your thoughts welcome here. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Quantum Vibe, it's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. Travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed With brain implants and artificial gravity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty QuantumVibe.com From Big Head Press The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job seekers and making all the other conversations you have more productive hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook if you want to know the latest about free talk live before we go on the air all you need to decide is how you want it delivered it's your choice visit news.freetalklive.com you can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list plus we have a twitter account that you can follow and a facebook page where you can become a fan so visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about free talk live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com that's news.freetalklive.com Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free 
Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever's on your mind by dialing toll-free 855-450-FREEZE. The toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You can join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So we were just talking about the how in the world we would uh, fight, or how in the world the world would look if there hadn't have been uh, the U.S. Revolutionary War, and um, it's an interesting question, especially now that I have to do the live read for antiwar.com. I'm a big supporter of antiwar.com. I love this website. I love the reporting they bring to the table. I am proud um, and delighted that the premier antiwar website on the internet is uh, of a liberty mindset, and. What concerns me, and the reason that I donated recently to antiwar.com, is is that uh, you know they had some government fines levied against them a few years back. They've had some major donors die. They didn't leave them uh, an endowment in that situation. Um, there are other donors that uh, panicked and and pulled out when they found out the FBI is monitoring antiwar.com, mm. and they're kind of in a tight spot. So much so that they had to cut staff uh, with over the last uh, couple of years, including, remember, Scott Horton used to do anti-war radio. Yes. Had to go on and do that on his own because anti-war couldn't support him anymore. The top folks over there, the top two, including Angela Keaton, have been uh, going without paychecks for the last, uh, you know, for this summer, essentially, and with the intention of salvaging the website. They're, they're, they're in that bad a shape. They're committed to keeping the website going. So you can go over to antiwar.com and you can take a look. Nothing looks different than it has looked up to this point. But behind behind the scenes, uh, they're scrambling for money and they could really use your donation today. Go to antiwar.com slash donate and donate if you would. Yes, they do take bitcoins. In fact, they prefer bitcoins. That's how I donated. They call it the peace currency antiwar.com slash donate. They will, however, take whatever form of payment you wish to give. Coming up, the NSA will not re- uh, comply or they're claiming they can't comply with a court order. Mark's got that story. We'll share it with you. But first to the phones and the fun, we got Mike in Maryland online here. Mike, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, hey, I, I want to um, open up a can of worms here. Oh, uh, we like that. I, Go ahead. To what a mental a mental chew toy uh, for something uh, for people to ruminate on or talk about, and it might sound ludicrous at first, and it's partly it's not in jest, but it's largely symbolic. With all these ridiculous wars that that, that we've been in for at least the past half century, but it, but more especially in the past uh, decade and a half between Iraq and Afghanistan and us bombing and droning, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, us droning Pakistan and bombing uh, Libya. And our support, obviously, we're training the terrorists that are attacking Iraq. I've not not bombed anyone nor trained any terrorists, but go ahead. Well, our government. You mean the government, okay. Yes, our government. Uh, The government, okay? Yeah, great. Uh, How's that? Yeah, uh, with all the death and destruction that, 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 that were raining upon the world, uh, I want to um, uh, start a petition. I don't know if it, it may take a uh, uh, you know uh, an amendment to the Constitution, but I would like to change our symbol from the eagle to the vulture. <laughs> How about that? Don't vultures wait until things are already dead to pick at them? I mean, they're not really an attack bird. Well, sometimes though they get, uh, yeah, but we're 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 there ready to to feed on the on the carrion and the carcasses of the dead and make profit on it too. Yeah, yeah. Everybody in Europe wasn't wasn't killed during World War II, and yet I I've always felt like the U.S. swept in like vultures hmm. at the end of that and fattened themselves up with the Marshall Plan and so forth. The, the Soviets, or, or I should say, should I say the Soviets? I don't know. I was going to say the Russians beat Hitler, not so much Soviets. the Americans. Well, um, they, they, they put up such a fight that the all the forces, um, the German forces, had to go to the Ost Front and uh, fight. But yes, that's where the major conflicts occurred in the uh, European theater. Well, yeah, in, in the European theater, but by the time we uh, uh, invaded Normandy, which we almost uh, didn't succeed because they didn't want to wake Hitler and have them send the uh, Panzer Division south. But by the time we, you know, we, we got to the Battle of the Bulge, uh, we were only fighting old men and boys. 
uh, and a few small elite units. I mean, the, the, the Soviets had pretty much kicked the stuffings out of the German army by the time we arrived. Yeah, it's not inaccurate. That's for sure. Mike, anything else you want to share tonight? No, uh, that's just it. I just kind of wanted to make a, a symbolic statement of, of how I, I'm really chagrined. Uh, I'm really ashamed of of the United States government. Uh, uh, I don't go to sporting events, but if they ever play the Star Spangled Banner, I guarantee you I would never stand. Awesome. Thanks, Mike, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Can share some of that frustration as well. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. I see why people get all choked up, and I certainly, um, you know, sometimes do at the Star Spangled Banner. Um, I mean, I, I understand the costs at which um, this, you know, the, the people perceive their freedoms to have come um, through, but I, I feel like. I feel like the government has taken those like I feel like the government has taken the flag and thrown it on the ground and stomped on it in in many many ways. When you look at the conflicts over the last 5 6 decades, um I I don't see the I, I don't see us protecting American freedom or American liberty. You know, the whole, you know, we'd be speaking, I don't know what, Vietnamese if we hadn't go to Vietnam? Uh, what, Czech if we hadn't go to Bosnia? <laughs> I mean, I'm exactly, what do they speak in Grenada? I'm not sure. Would we have, would we have been speaking Grenadian if we hadn't mm. have gone to Grenada? I don't know. Um, probably wouldn't have been speaking Arabic if, uh, if, if the troops hadn't been sent to I'm not sure even what is this Gulf War uh, 36? I mean, exactly when? I, I don't even know. There's been so many conflicts. And at this point, it seems like it's obviously for the benefit of the rich, the elite, the military industrial yeah. complex, well, the corporations, the uh, the fossil fuel industries, uh, hydrocarbons. I'm not exactly sure what terminology people wish to Didn't use. Didn't Smedley Butler write his war as a racket almost 100 years ago? I don't We're know. If close to it's it? getting close. I mean, yeah. it, it was before World War II by a good sh good stretch. Yeah, because he was a general in World War One, was he not? He, he was not allowed to go because of a dispute with Blackjack uh, Pershing. But he was still in. He was in the military, the, one of the most decorated. Uh, I think he might have. He was among the most decorated Marines. And you probably said, uh, Johnny Ray, you probably said good night to him in boot camp. Is that right? Right. You said good night, Smedley. Um, and, That's and, weird. Uh, it's not weird. It shows the level, of, the the level of dedication that the Marines have to, uh, you know, this guy. And why wouldn't they try to write this guy out of the the, the official history? You can't. He's that important. He's that big. Wow. The, uh, the the another friend of another friend of mine uh, was um, talking about his experience in the Marines, and um, there's a strong oral tradition, especially among the enlisted men. There, he was talking about uh, how in the 70s he was being accused of uh, before he came in by the drill sergeants of hanging out with the rag man and uh, you know little Polly. I can't remember what the terminology was, but he's like a rag man. When when did this last time they had a rag man? The 1920s. This well, is a person who went around and collected old rags. 855 450 freeze the toll-free number. Take control here of Free Talk Live. More on the way. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. 
Free Talk Live. We have been brought forward to bring out the truth. I knew this was true. All right, what is the truth? It. No, it's in the two books. Oh, you've got to buy the books. Now, how much is somebody going to have to pay for these books? It's right online, depending on what country you're in. They're $26 a piece here in the United States, including freight. Now, why would, uh, why would God put books out and require people to pay for them. What, what's the point in that? I mean, aren't there people out there that, you know, Those can't afford that? Those of us that? here on Earth have had to put the material together and get it copyrighted and available. Why would God want to copyright something? What's the point of that? I mean, w- wouldn't God want... Anything on this planet has to be copyrighted to be put out legally. By That's your not true. Not true at all. Not planet. true, sir. Nope. You can put Will whatever you, you want out there. Explain? No, you let me explain because uh, whatever you want, you can put online and nobody's going to tell you you can't do it. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MineThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MineThings.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Take control, toll free here. This is Free Talk Live. The number is 855-450-FREE. Coming up, Johnny Ray's Game of the Week, plus the NSA refuses to comply with a court order, and we'll explain why that is. Mark has the story. Our toll free number again, 855-450-FREE. Join us via Skype at Skype, username lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And don't forget to check out the Free State Project's Porcupine Freedom Festival. We are literally just days away. It starts up Sunday the 22nd through the 29th. It's going to be an entire week of fun up in the northern White Mountains of New Hampshire. Just a beautiful location filled with wonderful people. Around 1,500 people are expected to attend at this year's Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's always so many great new people there, too. People who've never been to New Hampshire, people who've heard about the Free State Project, but they're, you know, they're not so sure. Is it a real, is it the real deal? Are there really people who love freedom all moving to the same geographic area? Turns out, yes, there are. There are over 1,500 people already here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. We're getting uh, national press. We just had a national comedy show in town here in Keene. Uh, filming today, and there are a number of uh, mainstream media sources that are going to be covering the Porcupine Freedom Festival coming up here starting on Sunday. So there's a lot of attention being given to the Free State Project, and for good reason. We're having an impact here in New Hampshire. People are moving, and they're getting active for more freedom. 
And the more people can get here, the better. And the Porcupine Freedom Festival is a great showcase of some of the activism that's going on here. And more like it, what it more is a is a showcase of the community of activists that are here and what it's like to actually live nearby people who understand what freedom means. So go to porkfest.com and we look forward to seeing you there because Free Talk Live is going to be broadcasting live. P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com as we go back to your phone calls and thoughts. We've got Chernobyl on the line, and Chernobyl, you're calling us from Ithaca via Skype. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, uh, I go on Vice.com a lot, and they did a profile of this guy named Sean Atwood, who was an ecstasy kingpin in Arizona, who then ended up in Sheriff Joe Arapaio's jail. Oh, and he started no. a blog, yeah, and cockroaches and all that. But he oh. now posts, posts letters from his friends in jail... And one of them in particular is a really interesting guy. His nickname is T-Bone, and he's just massive black man like John Coffey. And his whole thing is that he smashes prison rapists because apparently there's a big problem with rape in prison. And this guy is like, he's writing letters. It's uh, the T-Bone Appreciation Society, and it's uh, seanatwood.com. And I'm, I watched the National Geographic uh, Locked Up Abroad. It's called Raving Arizona. And this guy, you can tell he's not... He's not BSing about his story, but he was he made some bad choices, but is now like he preaches to children about the dangers of drugs and is helping to try and get rid of Joe Arpaio, who's like the embodiment of evil, smug, old, fat, white man evil. And I just encourage everyone to check it out. He's trying to raise money for commissary for for uh, T-Bone to get some rapist smash fuel, you know, because the food in there is <laughs> terrible. So. So it's Sean Atwood, S H A U N A T T W O O D, SeanAtwood.com. And you are sharing, you shared a link with me on Skype to T Bones or John's Jail Journal, which is written by Sean Atwood. He's got letters from T Bone here talking about how apparently there was a recent uh, alleged rape happening in the showers. He heard, overheard something happening and confronted. Uh, the rapist, and then proceeded to, I guess, wail on physically on the rapist. Now, um, having in the only person in this conversation that spent any time in uh, prison, in prison, I've got to say that uh, I'm I'm somewhat skeptical that T Bone has spent too much time wailing on too many rapists. Um, I, when I first went into prison in 1989, there were a handful of incidents that were certainly legendary um, amongst the inmates. I may have heard one rape occur in a, um, uh, a what we called a, uh, a, well, I guess it was a cell block would be the best terminology. Um, and, and I don't know. I just heard like somebody scream and I had heard that something bad was going to happen to that person. So I don't know what happened in that circumstance. And I don't know that any rapes occurred I can't tell you that any rapes occurred um, for sure while I was in the nine years that I was in prison. I'm certain some did, but, uh, you know, like it was it wasn't a terribly common occurrence in Florida's most violent prison. Um, this was uh, the what they a place called they called Gladiator School, which was uh, Brevard Correctional Institution, which was the um, the level three youthful offender prison youthful offenders being uh, younger and dumber than regular convicts would uh, would be in more altercations than than regular convicts so i i, I tend to be skeptical that uh, this might be a persona that is building being built up around t-bone in order to get t-bone some money i could be wrong may i speak yes you may sir Okay, there's a big difference between prison in Florida and prison in Joe Arpaio's Arizona. Yep, and, and that's jail. Yep. Oh, yeah, here's the thing. Uh, he later went on to prison, which was, like, bad in its own whole other way. I was talking to him on Facebook because he's not really famous. He's more infamous. Who, you, he, whoa, whoa, who are you talking to, T-Bone or Sean Atwood? No, Sean Atwood. Sean, T-Bone is still in prison. But I but said, as I understand, should, some prisoners have uh, have so internet, so you. Oh, could, so Atwood is not in prison now. Is what you're saying? He's been deported. He's banned from America forever, which I think is really cool, actually. Uh, <laughs> Why but, was he banned? Obviously, we're going uh, afield from what your point is going to be. Why was he banned from the United States? What happened? He was a money laundering drug kingpin who was like he got out of the business because Sammy the Bull Gravano was going to have him killed. So then they busted him. The thing is, uh. 
like I said, you should call into this radio show and get some help for T-Bone. He's like, well, I'll talk to him if they want to talk to me. Uh, I think it'd be a really interesting guest. You can talk to him about being in prison. You can see if his story is full of holes or not. I really don't think it is. He's like a really sweet, nice, kind of adorable British guy, but he got in some very, very illegal stuff. Uh, so if you want to have him as a guest on your show, he'd have to appear via Skype since he's banned from the New Hampshire as well. He's we certainly, uh, he's certainly uh, welcome. Yes. I mean, we don't do tens. Free Talk Live tends not to be a guest-oriented show. But he's Every, certainly welcome to call yeah, in. Anyone can like call said. anytime they want about whatever they want. Hence the point of Free Talk Live. And, and you, the only claim here, I believe, is one rape, right? No, there's tons of rapes. You, he's written three books about his time in prison. Well, what got him into prison, his time in prison and stuff. And I think that there's a whole lot more going on in those jails because it's intentionally made to be in the most horrific, insufferable circumstances mm -hmm. possible. Our pile prides himself on putting the dogs in the air conditioning when leaving people out with scorpions in 130-degree heat, letting retarded people die, you know, heat stroke inside isolation cells. Like, the guy's evil. So this yeah. guy is basically... So I did not to keep his mouth shut, and he's going to stick it to Joe Arpaio as hard as he can, and I approve of that. Cool, man. I'll uh, I'll put a link over to – would you recommend the seanatwood.com or the John's Jail Journal uh, link to to give to folks? Well, on, on Facebook, he's there's there's Hard Time, which is where he posts the, the stories. There's John's Jail Journal, um, seanatwood.com. Right on the page, there's a link to his – raving Arizona locked up abroad it's really interesting like it's way better than some of those crappy you know reenactment kind of stuff because this guy's got a heck of a story and he was just lucky he had people who cared about him who got him a lawyer he's lucky he was smart he was lucky he had friends he was just lucky period so and he wants people to understand that it's all not all fun and games and I think that's a good message for the younglings out there to not sell ecstasy and get sent to prison and deported and stuff. Well, somebody's got to sell the ecstasy. Thanks for the call tonight, <laughs> Chernobyl. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But luckily, there are things like the Silk Road these days that help make things like selling drugs a safer activity. In fact... Uh, it brings up a, a piece of show prep that I had a few days ago. We never got to it. I actually never, I, maybe I did briefly mention it from deep.web.com. Ian, can I, can I uh, uh, preempt you just a yeah. moment? I think Joe Arpaio is a real good example of a, a government type who, at least partly by virtue of his association with government, is disconnected from the real world. The, the marketplace is a really challenging and humbling environment, and government office is not in the same way at all. Arpaio doesn't have customers that he has to, that he has to cater to. He doesn't have to worry about them at all. He for the just, most part, he gets reelected every few years, so that's a chance for him to get booted out, but he never is because he, he's got the tough-on-crime persona. Yeah, and he has no value uh, for, for humans. We will come back with more. I agree with that assessment. 855 450 free. There's a lot of confusing information out there about Bitcoin mining. Customers have been burned by companies taking their money on pre orders for Bitcoin mining equipment only to receive their equipment late and miss out on opportunities to mine Bitcoins. But that doesn't mean Bitcoin mining is impossible. You just have to find an honest company to do business with. If you want to mine Bitcoins and you want to do it now, no pre orders, no waiting. Look into the Antminer products from Bitmain. Their competitively priced Antminers are in stock and ship from the U.S. as soon as you pay. You could buy an Antminer today and be mining Bitcoins tomorrow. The Antminer line offers the best mining power per dollar currently available. 20% of the mining power in the Bitcoin network is contributed by Antminers. Not only that, but Bitmain is committed to support. You can get tech support and warranty service over the phone by calling 844-BITMAIN. For commercial accounts, they'll even travel to your data center to install your equipment. Get all the details at bitmaintech.com. That's bitmaintech.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, 
but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster call right now 800-981-7590 800-981-7590 get out of debt now 800-981-7590 So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. If you like the show, there's ways to support Free Talk Live, including uh, shopping with us at shop.freetalklive.com. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin online or or Dogecoin for that matter. It's uh, easy, fast, safe, legal, inexpensive. They make it easy for you at uh, expresscoin.com. The instructions are clear, and they pride themselves on their customer service, so much so that the the back end on their new website allows uh, for them to focus even more on meeting your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, all by starting off at expresscoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app that they now have, the new app at expresscoin.com. Uh, We'll talk more about this uh, Silk Road that I kind of teased a little bit here since we were talking about this ecstasy dealer a moment ago with our caller and how dangerous it can be to get into selling drugs like that. Silk Road has been making the drug trade more safe over time. We will uh, share that with you. You can also take control here. Let's go to James in Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Johnny Ray, and Mark. What's that, dude? I'm just tuning in and tripping out on Free Talk Live. Far out. Uh, Go ahead with your thoughts. We've all seen the pictures of the last time Adolf Hitler was seen in public, patting a little kid on the head and an old man that was standing in attention attention right next to him. They were uh, conscripted conscripted to defend Berlin, and over 300,000 people died in a short battle, relatively short battle relative to the rest of the war in Berlin. And if uh, I can guarantee you no old man or child shot my dad and unloaded on my dad's chest. You ever seen my dad with a shirt off? It would have shocked you too. But he made home alive, thank God. 
but uh, it's, it's utterly absurd to say such things like that. Uh, say what? The, I'm sorry. The expatriate Mike. That uh, oh, I don't know what his point about the Hitler. If only it sent the Panzer Division up. Uh, north what are we or talking or about? Okay, here? so what Mike said. Uh, um, Mike and the it took me a second. I just want to correct the historical record. But Ian, I know you don't know anything about you world history. I know you. That's that. It's that marijuana thing. You don't care no, about. No, it's that I didn't pay attention history. in history class. Can you explain what you're referring to? Did this happen tonight? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mike's call, and Mark backs up and said, I think it's accurate. It's not. No, I all. wasn't talking about in the weight of this. Accurate. In Berlin, it's accurate. But I want to say to Johnny Ray that I have God, to say— I'm going to put well, him hold on. Hold on. Wait, we have to talk have about to have the Panzer Division. The what claim that, that Mike said? The claim that Mike made was that that, um, that things on o U Omaha Beach and Utah Beach could have been far worse if people hadn't—if uh, if the Germans had not been afraid to wake Hitler up in order to get the Panzer Division sent south. That was the claim. I have heard that claim before. If Witt wants to rebut it, I'd love to hear James. it. I don't—okay, James wants to rebut it. I'd love to hear it. I don't have a preference one way or the other. All right, James, go ahead. You're back on. I wanted to rebut the old man and expatriates assertion that old men and children were fighting the Americans in the on the Western Front. That's absurd and it's wrong. And Mark, you said I don't. I don't think that's inaccurate. He but said you can check the record. If, anyway, Mark, I want to hold on. To he said Ray. that that wasn't just the West, Western Front. Wit, it's not, we're not talking about Market Garden here. Um, we're talking about past past the Battle of the Bulge. Once they James. had gotten in, I'm sorry, James, inside of uh, you know past the Rhine, that basically the troops had been eaten up. And by the time they got to Berlin, you're talking about just old men and and young boys. Wouldn't you Why, agree? That, that would be called the Battle of Berlin between the Russians. Between the Russians and the Germans, not the Americans. Okay. Are you saying that the no Russians Americans Germans, fought on the way that the into Berlin? Not like the Russians did. No, no, definitely and, uh, not like the Russians did. Yeah. The Russians uh, won the race, as we all know. Patton said, don't let them beat us there because they're going to ruin it for everybody, which they did. Because, uh, I, uh, uh, Ian, uh, the ISIL or ISIS, as I'd prefer to call them, they're not boogeymen. They actually are. By the way, if there were such thing as a boogeyman, uh, boogeyman, by the way, and they're evil murderers that do exist, and 500,000 people did flee, flee Mosul by foot, as last I heard. Uh, uh, and I consider it grotesquely immoral that uh, Barack Obama ordered our troops not to occupy Iraq after 2011, and that's why this mess is going on now. But hey, I don't want to call and James, rewrite. So they history. should occupy I forever, then, right? Well, don't, don't worry James. about it, James. Hey, um, right, well, we're, this still is still there in Germany. It's a wonderful country, Ian, and they were never invaded by the Soviets. James, Ian? James, there's some uh -huh. really distasteful parts of my that, job. Ian? Wait, wait a second. There's some really distasteful parts of my job, some things that I find uh, difficult, and I want to turn one of them over to you. Let's bring on Dave from Poughkeepsie. Yeah, Dave is We're actually going to give him James. Uh, J Dave, I, James, I, you run the show. If you're going to bring on somebody against me, why don't you bring AC back on to re respond to the slam? Oh. Dave, I, I, I don't think much of you. You've never had an interesting call to Free Talk Live. Let's hear you do it for at least once. Hello? <laughs> yeah, dummy. Don't talk about your truck. <laughs> And your old man, talk. Say something interesting. Hello? Can you hear me? Please dump his call, please. I, I want to say something to Johnny Ray. I think being anti-war uh, as a matter of principle is grotesquely can you hear immoral. Me? It's can a struggle. Ray, yeah, it's a struggle for me, James. Johnny and Ray, it's... can you hear me? I don't care for Dave, and he's so stupid he can't even figure out that he's on the air. I can't hear you. He hasn't figured out that he's not on that on the show afterwards, on the Bong Air Live, or whatever it's called. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, hang up. Bong I Air Live. Johnny Ray. You're too dumb to talk to. Get off the airwaves. Hello? See, see, James, it's easy okay, to hang up on people in this job, bit. isn't it? This is his bit. <laughs> hold on, okay, James. We've got to give Mark. Dave—I'm going to put James on hold here. we got to give uh, Dave a chance to say something here. Dave, are you with us? Yes, Hello? I'm there. All right, uh, Dave, you're on with uh, James. Go ahead, Dave, with your thoughts. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Dave. I am very, very annoyed because I, I've been a hold for the past 40 couple of minutes— there is a guy here in Poughkeepsie who keeps on calling me a leech and a bum in the Australian <laughs> society, which is wrong. I have a job. What do you do? Yes. What, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do, buddy? I am a telemarketer. There is a guy named Chuck, 1981, on Zillow. I hate him. He's a scumbag. He, he is I'm a done. leech. All right, Dave. The society. Dave, hang on a second, buddy. we got to get James in here to respond. James? <laughs> James is right. <laughs> 
James? Johnny Ray, you care to respond to, I think, again, to leave the Middle East to a He's just ignoring Dave. Like <laughs> Thanks it's for right, call, the right James. way to do it. James. Like James. Mark has suggested, <laughs> Johnny Ray, I think consider that grotesquely immoral and bad for everybody's future that wants to live in a free state and live free and die. In other words, the Middle East will never be free if we don't confront the murderers and stop what they're doing. Thanks, James, for your call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Johnny Ray, your thoughts? I, um, it's a struggle with me, and, and I haven't, it's, it's still something that I turn over in my mind with, uh, with uh, the, the Cantwell ethos that justice demands that you fight against the aggressor. And I've found that, personally for me, I think it's, it is, in every interaction that I've ever had with people, the, the right way to, to work my way through conflicts has never been to punch somebody in the mouth. That always just makes things worse. Sure. They just want to hit you back after that, and so on and so forth. Now, when I was when I was younger, I felt like the state had one function really, and that was to protect our liberties. But the way they do it is by stealing money from me. They they I don't agree with the way they do business, and I wouldn't give them my money voluntarily. But they get it because they they extortion isn't the right word well extortion is the right word for how taxes are taken um but james has come on the show recently and advocated that for a voluntary military um you know interaction in the middle east and so at that point all i can say is well i guess have at it i yeah and i second that um everything that the government does after they steal from me everything they do with that money is wrong so if they're if they're using it to fight a war, then they're wrong. I wouldn't be against someone fighting Hitler with force of arms or or using their own wherewithal to go and and effect change over in Nazi Germany. But there's the, no good will come of them extorting the money, coercing the money out of somebody. Mm -hmm. If if the fight is a is a just cause, then the the money and the resources will go to it. If your means are corrupted, then how can you expect moral ends? How can you expect well, good ends? And let's not forget that the whole situation there in Iraq was created by intervention from the West in the first place. Mm -hmm. Note the country is full of straight lines. This, yeah. is not, this is not a group of people that were sort of meant to be together. Saddam Hussein was buddy-buddy with the United States. They were shoved yeah. together. Saddam Hussein was, was noted for his control of extremist groups he didn't tolerate it in his iraq they were you know tortured and most of the atrocities uh, that saddam hussein um, did he did while he was friends with the u.s there, i'm sure there's got to be a saddam hussein miss me yet meme out there there is yeah, yeah. there's a miss me yet with uh, saddam hussein uh, miss me yet meme. toll free number is 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 still to come the nsa says it can't comply with a court order and mark's got the story there plus silk road how is it making drug dealing a more safe business it's free talk live hour three is on the way 855 450 free you can take control of the airwaves Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on Earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your source for daily news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, June 17th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,264, silver opened at $19.56, and Bitcoin is trading at $591.03. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. And support comes from Voice and Exit. Maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. Demonstrators burned an American flag near a stadium in northern Brazil Monday, protesting imperialism just hours before the U.S. soccer team's opening World Cup match. Protesters also used bricks and construction debris to smash the windows of at least three banks in the downtown region. The violence precedes Vice President Joe Biden's plans to attend the U.S. soccer game. The high cost of the World Cup spurred protests throughout Brazil last year, but officials say riots have been much quieter this year. The terrorist group Al-Shabaab killed at least 50 people in Kenya, executing men in front of their families after admitting they were Christian. That word from the Daily Mail. Some were attacked after gathering to watch the World Cup. The Somalia Al-Qaeda-linked terror group declared Kenya a war zone warning tourists to travel at their own risk. The group said they launched the Sunday night strike in retaliation for Kenya sending its forces to Somalia and accusing Nairobi of assassinating Muslim scholars. Kenya officials denied the allegation. Witnesses say gunmen went door to door asking residents if they spoke Somali. If the answer was no, they were shot dead. On Friday, Vice President Joe Biden will visit Guatemalan President Otto Perez Molina and senior officials from Honduras and El Salvador to discuss the massive influx of child migration into the United States. A senior administration official told reporters Sunday there's a misconception among parents in some Central American countries that children arriving in the U.S. illegally will be allowed to stay. They are ineligible for the Obama administration's Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program which can defer deportation for some arriving illegally, said the official. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, June 17th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A new international organization dedicated to protecting whistleblowers launched with a campaign to ensure the safety of NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden. The Stand with Snowden campaign kickoff was held in Berlin last week at the official launch event for the organization known as Courage. With Edward Snowden's one-year asylum in Russia coming to an end July 31st, Courage is approaching sympathetic governments, encouraging them to support the whistleblower. Snowden called the new organization a rapid response team for global democracy that will give truth-tellers and the public a tool to rally and support those who risk harm in order to release valuable information. Kyrgyzstan, a nation bordering China and residing south of Kazakhstan, has become one of the first countries in the world to ban all genetically modified crops and the sale and importation of GM food. China has made similar moves, including rejecting eight different shipments of GMO corn. The Kyrgyz members of parliament said they intend to police the borders for GMOs. If any are found, they will be either refused or destroyed. The country also intends to ban tobacco and alcohol advertisers. A Japanese study found that those who spend most of their days staring at electronic screens suffer from changes in their tear fluid, similar to those with a disease known as dry eye. 
Those who stare at screens most of the day reportedly lacked a protein responsible for keeping the eye moist. People with dry eye tend to be less productive and are more likely to suffer from depression. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, number 203. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, June 17th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. The nation's quadriplegics immobilized on Washington in support of stem cell research. And a Penn State t-shirt is awkwardly looked away from. And now for the weekly feature your fragile, susceptible mind already has your lips salivating for. This is the Onion Week in Review. Sources reported today that 10-year-old Brandon Thomas, who is currently homesick at his friend Kevin's sleepover, needs to just tough it the f*** out. I don't feel like playing Xbox right now. The pathetic little bitch who claims he just doesn't feel like eating any birthday cake or joining in any activities with his friends, frankly needs to grow a pair because his parents only live 10 minutes away, for Christ's sake. Here's what the whiny pansy had to say for himself. I wasn't crying. It's just allergies. I want to go home. What a f***ing wuss. In other news, a voicemail from mom is deleted three words in, and a man with nice eyes is blown. All right, now off with you. I can't have you seeing me like this. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're launching into the third hour of the program. You take control here. The we is me, Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And we invite you to become part of the show and bring up whatever you would like to discuss. Still to come here tonight, the NSA says it can't comply with a court order because they are too big. Too big to comply. We will give you the story here in moments from Liberty Crier, 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. We also had a caller last uh, last hour talking about a guy who went to jail and eventually prison for selling ecstasy. And at the very end of the call, he recommended that people not sell uh, drugs because they could end up going to prison. And I pointed out that, well, somebody's got to sell it. So uh, who's going to do it and how do you do it? Well, you can actually acquire a product from the Silk Road. You can go in the dark web, as it is called, to various sites that are similar to the Silk Road. These are underground marketplaces where not just drugs are sold, but other things. Some legal products are actually sold in these online drug marketplaces. Prescription pills, uh, fake identification, all kinds of interesting things that you, you can't go buy at Amazon. So uh, deep.web.com has a little rundown of a study that says that Silk Road has reduced violence. Silk Road, the existence of a website, has reduced violence in the drug trade. The story, again, from deep.web. I've been holding this post for over a week, and for some reason it slipped my publishing queue, but better late than never. The data in this study is a bit hard to verify, and a better definition would be debate between researchers more than a real study. But it does show some interesting views, so it's worth mentioning. Online black marketplaces such as the Silk Road, which used untraceable Bitcoin transactions and was shut down in October of 2013, may have actually reduced violent crimes related to drugs, according to a new report. Online drug traffickers tend to buy larger amounts of stock, acting as wholesalers, and with Silk Road acting as the broker of the deals, there was less chance of dealers meeting directly with a trafficker, and therefore less opportunity for violence, intimidation, and terrorism. The new report, entitled Not an eBay for Drugs, the Crypto Market Silk Road as a Paradigm of Shifting Criminal Innovation, carried out by University of Lausanne criminologist David Hetu and University of Manchester law professor Judith Aldridge. The research says the site was transformative rather than an incremental criminal innovation, and that it was giving rise to, quote, a new breed of retail drug dealer equipped with a technological subcultural capital skill set for sourcing stock. 
The study found that large amounts of deals on the site could best be characterized as being business to business, with sales in quantities and at prices similar to those of drug dealers obtaining stock. High price quantity sales generated between 31% and 45% of the revenue on the site, making sales to drug dealers the key Silk Road drugs business. Well, key um, is less than 50% here. Not to say it's not important, but I mean, there's a lot of users. There, there are enough users using it too, right? Well, yeah, there was something like a million users in total on the Silk Road, or at least, what, was it a million users or transactions? Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of people on the Silk Road. I don't think there's but a million users. There's... That that ratio is always going to be kind of like that, isn't it? Aren't there always going to be in number a lot more consumers and consumers than there are firms? It sounds to me like um, yes, that what they're saying is true is that there were some uh, dealers, plenty of dealers that were deciding, huh, this would be a good way to get my stock and be safer and and you know right. offer better products and that kind of thing. Because you don't know the vendor and the ve- you know the vendor doesn't know you is the idea. And a lot of people, the, the you know the a lot of people, depending on the type of drug, as I understand it, Silk Road was bigger into marijuana and ecstasy than it was in, like, crack and heroin. I, w- I don't know. I mean, we'd have to go and look at the numbers. I read another story on this, hmm. and that's what they'd said, is, is uh, that that was, in fact, what they did. And that's more... The buyers for that are less committed, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know, if uh, one weekend you just can't find any ecstasy, well, then I guess you just don't do any ecstasy. So essentially the story says here it means that the end users of the drugs were not the purchasers. The dealers were, and they were using it to stock up on product without having to interact with traditional suppliers. The way Silk Road's transactions took place meant that their vendors were able to trade in an environment with far uh, less of the risks associated with traditional drug markets. Shouldn't that be far fewer of the risks? Um, It depends on whether you're talking about the risk or the risks. Yeah, there's fewer risks. risks. There's less risk. There's fewer risks. And by the way, this is uh, style, not uh, rules. In cases of dispute, Silk Road administrators would adjudicate the deals and vendors' reputations in their previous deals were available in eBay-esque feedback. New buyers without a transaction track record were required by vendors to circumvent the protection that payment escrow offered them and release the funds to the vendor before the goods were received, allowing vendors to remove the risk of non-payment, theft of product and cash, and potential for violence that may be apparent in face-to-face meetings during a trade. Further research on the site suggested dealers began to trade there for its low-risk, high-traffic, high-markup, secure and anonymous environment. It changed the entire paradigm for drug sales by creating a massive, relatively safe, worldwide market for the drug dealers who sold there. And that's, you know, as far as uh, MDMA or ecstasy goes, Mm -hmm. um, or molly or whatever the terminology is one wishes to use, this really makes a difference because much of the stuff that's going around in the United States is cut with things like heroin and dextromethorphan no. hybrid bromide. I don't know if there's ever been any evidence that heroin has been used to cut uh, MDMA, the, but the it claim certainly has certainly has, been there. It has certainly been cut and or uh, been sold as, or other products have been sold as though they are MDMA, and that's bad. Stuff that's less healthy for you, I would say. Yeah. No. There's a story on quartz, QZ.com, from December 2013 that says... Um, um, that MDMA was the most popular amongst U.S. users of the Silk Road. MDMA was the most popular, followed oh, in interesting. order of importance, uh, followed in order by LSD, marijuana. Wow. And, and marijuana's number three. That's a shocker. Mm-hmm. They, people can get it, though. Well, that's a good point. You can get real marijuana in real life pretty easily. There's not a lot of bunk, fake marijuana out there, whereas in, in the MDMA market... There's a whole lot of fake MDMA. I mean, odds are good if you buy MDMA from any street dealer or club dealer, which I don't recommend you do, uh, that it's going to be fake. I mean, you can you can almost bank on the fact that it's going to be fake. So that that makes sense, I guess, that MDMA would be the number one sought in the United States because it's so bad here. Whereas over in the Netherlands and other nearby countries, that it's a lot better. the 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 uh, the MDMA there is is more likely to actually be MDMA when you buy it. So maybe it's not as popular in those countries on sites like the Silk Road. And of course, LSD is also uh, in a lot of cases bunk. Uh, when Rich Paul, our friend who's in jail, he was actually charged with one count of purported selling purported LSD. Well, he thought he had LSD, but it wasn't. It turned out it was something else that uh, that he was selling. Well, I thought that he knew what it was, but he called it acid. And he never referred to it as LSD. I got the impression that he, in the at least initially he didn't know okay. uh, what what he had ended up. This is getting. not testimony. <laughs> He's already been found guilty 
Mark. So. He's uh, going up to the Supreme for the Supreme Court this week, right? Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So, um, yeah, so interesting also that LSD was number two on that list because, again, LSD is a hard-to-find substance. It doesn't come around very often in my experience. And if it does come around, if what is purported as LSD is coming around, there's also good odds it's not real. It's something else. It may be some sort of hallucinogen. Um, so, you know, if you take it, then you will have a likely, you will have some sort of an experience, but it won't be LSD in a lot of cases. Yeah. Strike and, nine. Rat poison. And that one's even more difficult. No, not likely to be those things. It's more likely to be um, some sort of imitator, basically. There are others, other trippy substances out there. Um but anyway, there you go. Let's uh, continue on here with a story from deep.web.com. For the research on the site, that is the Silk Road, suggested that dealers began to trade there for, uh, again, this environment they had. The assumption is based on the premise of only the vendors being drug dealers. If Silk Road's customers sourcing the products were also drug dealers, a deal would have to take place further down the line, potentially introducing violent or territorial situations. Silk Road traffickers were more likely to sell less harmful and higher purity drugs than their street counterparts. Heroin, crack, and methamphetamine accounted for only a small share of the marketplace traffic, which was dominated by sales of prescription drugs with 3,953 listings and generating some $11 million in annual revenues. Cannabis accounted for $24 million of the purchases and over 2,600 listings. And the site mostly catered to recreational drugs, including ecstasy, cannabis, and psychedelics, which together represented $53 million in revenues. We'll continue. You can share your thoughts as well here on the Silk Road, making the drug trade safer. This is Free Talk Live. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Amanda Bolso here from Midas Resources. Today, June 10th, 2014, gold opened at 1261.10. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1307.17, 653.59 for a half ounce, or 326.79 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's 1307.17, 653.59, and 326.79. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want toll-free. The NSA can't comply with the court order, they say, because they're too big. We'll share the story with you here, and the we includes me, Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And if you care about online privacy, steps must be taken. You have to do something to protect your privacy because your internet service provider is probably violating it. They're probably taking every single search term that you enter, every uh, website that you punch in, and they're probably logging that information, in some cases, for up to five years. So they're not very concerned about your privacy. But ProXPN is. And you can go and get started with ProXPN right now at ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can use their uh, their freebie account and get started with that and, and try out the service. And you'll find out how great of a service it is because they encrypt your internet connection. They make it so everything that you put in is encrypted. Uh, every bit of data flowing out and into your computer is encrypted, meaning your ISP will no longer know what you're doing online. That means they'll no longer be able to track and or sell or give that information to the government. So you can put a stop to it over at proxpn.com slash FTL. And with their premium account, which you can get with our discount code FTL20 for 20% off for the lifetime of the account, with the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. You get servers around the world to which you can connect. You can also privately torrent with ProXPN. Now, you want to use their Netherlands server for maximum privacy protection. And again, you need to have their premium account to do those things. So go and get signed up, get started, grab their software for Windows, Mac iOS, or Mac, comma, iOS. Those are two different things. And uh, Android devices as well. Plus, Linux users, you can email their tech support and get some instructions on how to set things up for Linux. It's a little different there. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code FTL20. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online surfing habits. We're going to continue here with your thoughts. We've got uh, the Silk Road story at deep.web.com. We've talked about some of this stuff about the Silk Road for years, about how it's a real study and harm reduction to to look at the Silk Road. You pointed out, Mark, that you know the drug quality is more likely to actually be what you order on the Silk Road, this sort of underground drug marketplace, basically. And that helps keep drug users safe. You're likely to get the amount that you've ordered, the purity that you've ordered, because there's more open competition there to make dealers more honest and sell products that are not bunk. Right. I mean, if you look at eBay, um, yes, there are bad business deals that go on on eBay, but people work very, very hard there to get a good user rating. Um Silk Road isn't much different, except that you don't have to give, you know, all your identifying information when you get an account, except the account is yours. You know, if I go in and I uh, make an account, Mr. Schnurglepuss, and I've got the uh, password. Uh, so you're Mr. Schnurglepuss. <laughs> I am the Mr. Schnurglepuss. Um, and I go and I make <laughs> that account. I'm the only one with the password. It may not yeah. give my name and my address and my social security number and all those other things. But, but your I'm transactions are tied to the account and they're there's a reputation there. Right. And people are very careful when they buy from new people. They want to go to Mr. Snurglepuss, who has that 100 rating or whatever it is. It's I, true. So I really don't know what the ratings the are. The story over at Deep.Web is going to give us more uh, info about the Silk Road and some of the numbers behind the site. You know, what how, What were the popular drugs and how much money were they pulling in? Barbara is with us, though, listening to KZNU in St. George, Utah. Hi, Barbara. Well, he hello. Um, 
I just uh, was listening, and, and I just uh, was a little concerned about the uh, whether you advocate, you know, for for drug use. And uh, my 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 grandson said, you know, he's all about this uh, liberty uh, movement, and and you know, I I thought I would listen, and I thought, oh my, it is. Is he trying to tell Grandma something? Is he on acid or dropping? That's funny. You know, I don't know what you call it, well, but I, I don't like know you say, boys, and I don't. Barbara, I'd like to just to answer your question right up front. Uh, I advocate for harm no. reduction. That's my viewpoint. I think that we have to take the position that people are going to use drugs, even if you know you or others don't think that's a good idea. We know people are going to do it, whether we're talking about alcohol, oh, wow. which is the hardest drug. Alcohol is a very, very yeah. dangerous drug. Or whether we're talking about LSD or MDMA or any of these other common illegal drugs, people are going to use drugs. And the harm reduction approach says, okay, we accept that people are going to use drugs. So let's make it uh, let's let's make a world in which the people that are using drugs are likely to survive the encounter. They're likely to oh, live, live through it. Go ahead. No, I, I that makes sense. You know, I. Uh originally from Minnesota, you know, and uh, we, but, you know, I'm old, I'm, I'm older and, and, you know, lived through the, through the crazy drug days and uh, <laughs> I just you? didn't quite understand it. Oh, you know, you don't 75. ask a lady that. Well, she didn't answer the question. <laughs> no, we I don't mind. About. I'm proud of how no, old I, I, I do. Am. I didn't hear what you said. How old? I'm 75. 75. So you were a little older during, so 1969 or whatever, maybe uh, you were, what, close to 30 or something like that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I can't do the math. Okay. Because I know my parents my were born anymore. in 1950 and they're in their mid-60s now. That's how I was able to do the, the run the numbers so quickly. So maybe, were so were you in part of that culture? Did you experience that when you were? Oh, no. 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 no, I was not raised that way. But, you know, I watched the news. I knew that it was going on, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but, um, I, I would prefer, like, in, you know, in my little world, I would prefer nobody ever do mind-altering substances. But I would be a real uh, hypocrite if I said that nobody could. Because I have a glass of red wine, um, you know, many evenings, and... I admit, admittedly, it changes and alters the way that I feel. It's sure probably does. the reason I do it. And so if I'm going to enjoy a glass of wet red wine or two, then um, other people are going to do whatever it is that they do, as long as they're not harming anybody, like getting into a car and running folks down, that kind of thing, then, uh, you know, I don't have much to say. Yeah. I definitely would go ahead and say, kids, don't do, uh, you know, methamphetamines, crack, heroin. Oh, yeah. If you're going to do something like that, you know, stick with the stick with the stuff that's not going to get you addicted and ruin your life. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I like that. I, I'm glad that, you know, I first I wasn't going to hold, you know, and, and talk to you because I thought, oh, that, they'll just think I'm silly. But I I appreciate, you know, I respect that because, you know, I like a little wine in the evening, too. So I understand that. That's what I was going to ask you. And I'm glad that you volunteered the information, Barbara. And I appreciate you calling in to clarify, to ask for clarification on this. And thank you for it's, the call tonight. It could be so hard yeah, to know. Well, thank you, boy. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> It's been so long since I've been called a boy. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it's it's so difficult to know what the individual listener's thinking, right? Like there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, depending on the night and the time um, with Free Talk Live of people listening. You don't, you can't really think what each person is thinking in any given moment. So I love it when folks like Par Barbara call in for clarification. Yeah, it's really great. And you can and do I like too. it when they call Johnny Ray a boy. <laughs> I'd like to add that the youths of America... I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they don't have a whole lot of respect for the authorities in Washington, D.C., and the war on drugs only erodes that authority. Marijuana and methamphetamine, their their chicness is augmented by the fact that it's illegal. It's true. You know, there's no, there's no cough syrup chic, but there is a heroin chic. Let's come back with more. Uh, your thoughts certainly welcome. Altering one's consciousness, it's something that is natural for humans, as uh, Barbara just pointed out. She has done it for herself, and that is drug use. Uh, and it's, you know, if it's done moderately, it's not a terrible thing. It's Free Talk Live. We're coming up. 
If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can take control of the airwaves here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about the drug business and how Silk Road single-handedly changed the game. And that's what this, uh, the report that deep.web.com is talking about here is explaining about you know some of the numbers behind the Silk Road and what it was that people were using the site for. Turns out a significant portion of the site's revenue 
was actually coming from wholesale deals. 31 to 45 percent of the revenue, according to this study, uh, were high price quantity sales, meaning that dealers were buying from dealers. Right. I mean, Silk Road is as significant to the drug trade as eBay or Amazon were to retail sales and are still to yeah. retail sales. Now, the, the Silk Road still exists. Silk it's, Road 2.0. Yeah, it's uh, things are a bit different than they were before, but it's still still chugging along. And I don't know what the specifics are of sales or anything like that. Wouldn't propose to know. It's not, my, uh, it's not where I pay attention, but it really did make a difference. And the ways that it made a difference are uh, quality in in that remember when you're talking about bad quality with illegal drugs you're talking about people having adverse reactions overdoses dying yeah, possible death the possible death now there's far fewer deaths to illegal drugs than there are to prescription drugs taken the way that they're prescribed but that's really sort of uh, you know I mean people are concerned with that and they should be concerned with that the second thing is is the violence that surrounds the drug trade people uh, participate in violence in all d kinds of different ways. And that is, um, I mean, you know, is it a deterrent to people doing drugs? I suppose, but you, what you. No, not really. I mean, the violence isn't as common between a street level dealer and their customers. It's more. No, they just common. rip them off and give right. them, sell them bad product. Yeah, that's more common. What's the violence becomes more common is the, the money becomes more valuable, uh, the, the trades become more valuable. So. It doesn't take much to encounter violence in the drug trade. It certainly is out there, and it's not hard to to come across. But the fact is, as we can see where um, drugs have been legalized around the world or decriminalized around the world, that you see um, less drug usage, less crime, and younger people using drugs less often. So we had had a lady call in, Barbara, Barbara. From, uh, from Utah. She said her grandson's been listening to the show, really likes the freedom ideas, and she wanted to check it out. And her concern was about, well, are we advocating for drug use? And I said, oh, I'm a harm reduction advocate. I'd like to de uh, detail that a little bit further. But coming up on July 19th and 20th, Mark, you and I are going to be in Chicago, me for the first time. I've never been to Chicago before. Have you, Mark? I know you went on a road trip a long time ago. I have been to uh, Chicago several times. Uh, so it'll be a first time for me, and it's also a first time for the North American Bitcoin Conference to go anywhere in the Midwest, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, I was there for the Chicago Marathon. My wife ran the Chicago Marathon, and oh, I had wow. to meet her in several different locations. So I give her water and, uh, you know, like little uh, packets of uh, energy. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's harrowing, just just exhausting having to go to all those different stops and meet her. How do you do that if she's running in the marathon? Are you I like get it. I see, I see what you did there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because he never gets a joke. This is what it's like working you know, with Ian. You're not working without a net. You're working without a wire. I mean, there's no laugh track. There's no nothing. I thought you were like getting on a subway or he something He was saying, like that. well, he was, and that was his point. That I was, it was using easy, taxi cabs. It was easy for him to do what he did while his wife was running a marathon. I stop off it. I missed one of the stops because I had Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> July 19th and 20th will be there, as will many great speakers. Trace Meyer from the Armory Wallet. This is the North American Bitcoin Conference. Peter Smith of Blockchain.info. Flip Philip Kowski of the Peace Action Network. Vitalik Baterin from Ethereum. Jeffrey Tucker Liberty from Liberty.me. And many others. You can go to btcchicago.com to learn more about the event. Get your tickets right now. And, of course, you can pay in Bitcoin. It's July 19th and 20th, Chicago's McCormick Place South Building. For the North American Bitcoin Conference, we'll be broadcasting there as well, uh, btcchicago.com. So, uh, talking briefly here uh, a little bit more about harm reduction and well, why it's so important. I wanted to talk about uh, Barbara's call and how, you know, it's... It's it's a sad state of affairs in talk radio when uh, somebody wants to call in, ask a question, or feel, uh, you know, just sort of make a comment or whatever. And their biggest fear, and their fear is, is that they're going to get made fun of and oh, treated yeah. badly. And I don't know what that says about other talk radio. I don't listen they're to jerks. a lot of it. Maybe that maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, but they treat their callers like tissues. I, in, I have heard that that's how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> Free Talk Live, hopefully we don't do that. And consider for a second, we didn't know that, uh, you know, we were going to talk about the grandson here, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a listener of ours that's on board, and how would he have felt if his grandmother had been treated poorly on that the air? Been, that would have been terrible. Would have been terrible. But she had a positive experience on a, co you know, on a, on a topic on which she was relatively wary, right? Like, that could have gone bad. That call yeah. could easily have gone bad. 
and uh, we managed to take uh, a wary caller, a concerned caller, and turn it into a positive conversation where everyone was able to communicate exactly how they felt. I and think I it's pretty that clear that if you if you call into Free Talk Live, you know, with a pugnacious attitude, that things may not go uh, particularly well. We'll try our best. But, like a certain uh, caller earlier on tonight. Well, it's just yeah. I, I, I thought that that would pretty darn well, frankly. <laughs> she 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 had our number. She was a grandmother with a Minnesotan accent. There was <laughs> no way she that... said she was from Minnesota. Like really. <laughs> <laughs> it was cute. So, um, yeah, I mean, maybe I don't know what her grandson is into. I mean, maybe he's gotten into experimentation. Maybe he hasn't. I, I can understand why that's a scary thing for for parents or grandparents, because there's been a lot of demonization of drugs in the mainstream media. And a lot of drugs are very dangerous. You know, they, they can be very addictive and people have prob people are more likely to have problems with some drugs than other drugs. You know, you ticked off some of the real baddies, Mark, that people seem to have real issues with heroin and uh, crack cocaine as well as methamphetamine. You know, methamphetamine. But that's not to say people haven't had problems with cocaine or MDMA. I mean, it, an, an addict can get addicted to a lot of a lot of experiences and, uh, you know, drugs provide a I think people can get experiences. addicted to marijuana. Um, somebody, Rich, called in last night and said that people couldn't get addicted to marijuana. I think they can, but I think they can get addicted to ice cream at night, too. It's true. I do love some ice cream. So, yeah, drugs are, uh, they can be very dangerous, and they should be respected because of that. They should be used, if you're going to use them, with much caution and care and research and learning about what you're getting into. And the illegal or the illegality of these drugs makes it difficult uh, to acquire information about them, or at least it was more difficult in the past before the advent of the Internet. Now, all you have to do is spend a little bit of time, and you can acquire information. But if you don't look online, you can get a lot of bad info from people in the drug culture. There's, right, you're, you're getting info of... like when I was younger in the 80s, um, you listen to people. And this is a terrible way to get information. Yeah. And it used to be a terrible way. The, the black market used to be a real bad way of actually getting the drugs themselves. So, again, harm reduction says let's reduce the harm, accepts the idea that people are going to use drugs, and says how can we make it so this person has as positive an experience as possible and as healthy an experience as possible and comes out of it alive without a bunch of negative side effects? What are the ways that that can happen? And how can how, how can they have the experience without ending up inside a jail cell as well? You want to talk about reducing harm? Uh, the, the, the war on drugs creates more harm. If you've got somebody who's a drug addict taking that person out of their life and putting them into a jail cell or a prison cell is not helping them uh, with, with their habit necessarily. And it, in a lot of cases, makes people's lives worse, which drives depression and drives more and further uh, in probably increasing harm levels of, uh, of drug use. So the Silk Road has helped change this in a lot of ways. Not only has it changed the, the game of drug dealing from the, the business side in that drug dealers are now able to source product from all around the world instead of their one to three or you know very few dealers in a local area then you just you know you get what you get you've got the connections you've got whereas now that the silk road exists an entire world of uh, vendors opens up and that means competition that means good product that means better prices and all of that can be that safety can be passed down to the consumer uh, as well so it's been a, a real interesting experiment to watch the Silk Road. Opioids, by the way, from deep.web.com, prescription drugs and stimulants were worth about 60% of the 50 of, uh, let's see, $53.3 million in revenues, which came from recreational drugs like ecstasy, cannabis, and psychedelics, or about $32 million. In comparison, crack cocaine was only found in eight listings on the site, while methamphetamine accounted for just three. Now, this is likely a snapshot in time, you know, one moment of the Silk Road. It changes over time here. 855-450 free is the toll-free number or more. With your calls and thoughts, certainly welcome here. We'll try to slip in a game of the week as well. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 
10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On July 21st, 2007, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the final installment in the widely popular Harry Potter series, was released as excited fans all over the world eagerly flipped to the book's final pages to find out if Harry and Lord Voldemort finally f***. Author J.K. Rowling had already succeeded in creating one of the most popular literary franchises of all time. And of course, much of that success was owed to the expertly crafted sexual tension that steadily built up between the series' protagonist, schoolboy wizard Harry Potter, and the Dark Lord Voldemort. Everyone in the country wanted to know whether or not they would f and if they did f how many times would they f and who would be f who? And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of Mother Teresa, if there is one lesson to learn from the past, it's that no matter what you do, there will always be a bunch more crippled dying kids. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free. We'll get your call in here maybe in this moment, so the remaining moments of Free Talk Live here. But if you don't get in tonight, we've got another show tomorrow. We do them seven nights a week, 7 to 10 at night Eastern Time. And you can join us online if you don't get us on your local talk radio station at freetalklive.com. And get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Our gift to you to try out BuzzBox Coffee. It's 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans, shade grown. Shade grown is important if you get that kind of acid reflux thing from coffee. Shade grown can handle that. It's also better for songbirds, by the way, because they, they nest in those trees that shade the coffee. Um, check out, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. One of the uh, special things about BuzzBox Coffee is, is that they allow partners like us to give microloans to people around the world. So when you get your coffee, 
you're going to drink coffee anyway. You might as well get it from coffee.freetalklive.com. When you get it through there for every 10 people that do, we're able to offer another microloan to help another family in need around the world, whether it's a sewing machine or a plow or a bicycle or whatever it is that they need to uh, make a business and make a better life for themselves. It can make a real difference. Give them the hand up that they need by going to coffee.freetalklive.com, signing up for the subscription, getting your free pound, and trying the coffee, enjoying the coffee, and continuing to get your coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Nathan in Texas on Skype. Hi, Nathan. Hi, guys. Um, I wanted to call in and uh, be part of the epic show where Dave and Witt call in at the same time. I was actually, I had this idea, but I decided it wasn't worth talking about but then they beat me to it. Who's they? Okay. I'm talking about Dave yeah. and James. And yeah. James. Um, but since they broached the topic, I want to know uh, if they did have their own show, who would uh, uh, who would each of you want for the third uh, co-host, and what how, what do you think they would do? So if if James from Arizona and Dave from New York, two of our chronic callers. So this is like a fantasy talk show host league. <laughs> is that what's exactly. going on here? <laughs> if they had their own show, who should the third host be? Is what your question is. Exactly. G.G. Allen. The punk band? Yeah, the punk rock guy who uh, made his uh, living out of like eating poo on stage. But and that does, kind of thing. wait, 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 wait. Can the, can the choice be from anyone who's in the, you know, the in existence of humanity, or does it have to be an existing caller to uh, Free Talk Live? I, uh, well, it would have to be an existing person. I don't know if it would have to be a caller, but uh, I guess if you like. I was thinking you were going to say Mr. Tack Pants because you speculated. Oh, yeah, that that's a it. great idea. No, I hadn't thought of Mr. Tack Pants. If you did, if you put Neil Bortz on there, he'd just explode with rage now they'd probably team up team up on dave and beat him neil bortz is a uh, talk show host by former the way. talk show host yeah it's for people that don't know what you're talking about nathan anything else you want to know tonight? about mr tech oh. pans my, my vote by but by, by the way <laughs> everyone nathan knows about mr for, tech pans <laughs> for tom Sorry, in well, new hampshire tom in new hampshire says johnny ray would be his vote uh i have to con i have to concur i think that would uh i think it that would, would be interesting the trio there you go good thought experiment nathan uh anything else you want to share no, that's it. Have a great evening, Appreciate guys. the call tonight. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. I'd just pick Ian. Guess it would be fun to just put him in the room with those guys and leave him there. Now, uh, yeah, so uh, feel free to call in with anything that might happen to be on your mind. Let's change gears here uh, completely. Johnny Ray, we were going to talk about the NSA story, but I don't want to just give it short shrift here. We'll put that on hold and maybe bring that up tomorrow night. Uh, Johnny Ray, you had a game of the week. Right. It's a, it's more of a teaser. Um, well, I will say that I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone this week. I still go back to that. That 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 game for, That's for a strategy card game online. It's a, yes, it's a sort of it's an online collectible card game with it's very oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking? They call for? it a collectible card game, even though it's online. Doesn't that take all the collecting fun? No, out you of can it? collect things online. No. Not the same. It's not what the do you same. mean? This is not the same. I don't think. Who it's are the you same. to say? A collection you has to take up space. <laughs> what? A collection has to take up physical space. It takes up digital space. Whatever. Yeah, it's just not the same, man. I mean, I've played what? the Magic: The Gathering online, and yeah, you can get cards <laughs> online, but it's just they're just digital. They don't exist. They're not real. They, they, they welcome to the 21st collection. century. Yes, okay, friends. They're only on paper, dude, and the artificial scarcity can be just as built in in um, digital space as it can be in the online space. I don't know what's wrong with you, you old Luddite, but the fact is, is that these are collections. It's a lame collection. You can't show it off to anybody. You can't pass it physically to anyone else. They Since can't appreciate it in this, any way. Right, they can't covet it. Sure they can. You can go in your little groups online and talk about it and uh, say, hey, I've got this card. Nah, 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 nah. Um, I play, <laughs> since we're talking about the game of the week here, Johnny Ray, I used to play this game called Marvel Avengers Alliance on Facebook. Obsessively. Anybody, I mean, anybody were... who was my Facebook friend would see these things come through, you know, these evangelical um, click here things that the game sends out out whether you want to or not mark is about to fight the sentinel mark ii he it, needs your help right that kind of thing <laughs> that's uh -huh. going on and it's annoying because most people playing the games don't want to send those out to their friends it uh -huh. just you know the the games do yeah, that i don't care either right oh. and and facebook's gotten better about sort of hiding them from you if you're not interested in seeing them but um i in that game there's things that are of more value and less value and more scarce and less scarce and people talk about them um you know being 
digitally valuable. Yeah, so these things are of value. Now, by the way, since we're talking about new games, Marvel Avengers Alliance has come out with a new sort of version called Tactics. Now, um, I, you know, I, what I decided to do, that since I played this a couple of times and kind of liked it, is, is I, created a, I created one of those mini, uh, you know, another Facebook account so that it doesn't bother my friends. Oh, so you log into that when you want to play the game. Yeah. Oh, that's a neat idea. Yeah. There you go. So when is the tactics one like a strategy version? They're all strategy. Um, the tactics one, it basically, uh, it's it's more live motion, like you move around a game board. Oh. Okay. Um, so there's there's different forms of strategy. They're all you know strategically based. Ah, see, I know nothing but about this game that you've been playing once for however many years. The strategy. Once you know the strategy, though, you can't. I mean, like you. You can't not know it. It's not that complicated mm. to know the strategy. Why do you keep playing it? I mean, it seems like you've played it. I've, I've seen enough of your little updates to know that you've beaten the same guys over and over again. So what's the replay value for this game? You, you get more money and be able to buy more things and um, you know increase levels. So you can go and keep fighting the same guys over and over again. Yes. Well, so that you can continue to you you could do pay, player versus player versions and get stronger mm. in that realm too. Okay. And there's you know there's Easter eggs throughout the there's digital things that are highly scarce that are in the game that if you play right. over and over again you know you have to battle uh, the Joker. It's I'm never sorry, been the, a motivator the goblin. for me. Those those things have never. And I'm curious to know, know about you, Johnny Ray, on this. Like some of the the newer games that that come out, uh, B Borderlands Two was one of them, for instance. You beat the game, and then they'll let you play again with all the stats that you collected, and you're just fighting the you're fighting the same characters. They're just leveled up. So instead of a level three, they're a level thirty, and they're stronger, and you're stronger. So it's basically you're playing the same game, but you get more weapons and things like that. But for me, it's like it's still the same plot. So why do I I want to go through all of that over again. Have you ever been motivated to to do that? Well, I've certainly been motivated to complete games more than once. Mm -hmm. um, uh, XCOM would be an example, right? Yeah, XCOM would be an example. I almost did it with XCOM. Like, I had started on that path, but then I got distracted by a different game that I hadn't played yet, so I went and played that instead. Uh, a lot of games, or some of them, I think the good ones, when you when you go up a difficulty level, say you beat it on easy or you beat it on mm -hmm. medium and you want to play it again on medium or you want to play it again on hard, then the change in difficulty can really can really make a difference in the combat system or the game mechanics. The gameplay, yeah. The yeah, so so before when you were playing through, you were you were enjoying the narrative yeah. and you were pushed a little bit maybe to to fiddle around with your with your own gameplay so that you could get through, but then when you go in through it again then you can use your knowledge and the game will test you. Yeah, I right. do like the idea of it being more comp or more challenging, I guess, a second time through. Uh, but. On God of War, I noticed this definitely. You, you play through on uh, you know beginner mode or whatever, and you just mush some buttons, you go through, you watch the story, you win every time. You go through on Spartan mode, um, and you better know what series of, uh, you know, that you push these buttons and how to move mm -hmm. in and, and attack each enemy. Otherwise, your, your Spartan butt's dead. So, Johnny... The teaser. You've started a game. You just started it today, though, so you don't have a real comprehensive review. What is it? What are you working on? It's called Pandora First Contact. It's a 4X. I can never remember the Xs, but it's like Civ. Civ was the classic 4X game. Uh, explore, expand, exploit, exterminate. Hmm, okay. So like an overhead map kind of thing? With yeah, it's... Building it's a society, also, army. Are, they also call... call call them god games uh, mm -hmm. not 4x and god game is not synonymous but i'll continue so the story is that you're this is a spiritual successor in many ways to alpha centauri which was one of my favorite games it's arguably my favorite game of all time and this game's called what again this game is called pandora 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 first contact okay so it's like it's like civ you're controlling a faction of humans and they've made planet fall um, I'm playing these sort of free market university types, mm. and um, and are there aliens? Yes, uh, there are. I'll Who the hell are you going to be contacting if there aren't aliens? The thing is, the aliens come in like 200 turns into the game, so all the people hmm. are fighting each other, and then it's like Harry ah, Turtle Dove. Where we'll learn more to... about it next week on Johnny Ray's Game of the Week. In the meantime, you can join us online. In the meantime, at freetalklive.com. I'm at. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you?
Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, June 17th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,265 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $600. Antiwar.com reports, Speaking at a press conference ahead of a National Security Council meeting, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko announced he intends to propose a ceasefire with the Eastern Separatist factions. Poroshenko said the ceasefire would officially be offered later this week and would only come after the military had seized the Russian border back from the rebels. Poroshenko argued that it would be irresponsible to make a ceasefire while the border remains open and said that while he was open to amnesty for protesters, it would not include those involved in violence in the East. So far, there is no response from the separatists on the prospect of a ceasefire, but they seem unlikely to willingly give up without some concessions made ahead of time. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Reuters reports U.S. security officials prepared on Monday to brief President Obama on options to counter militants threatening Baghdad as Iraqi Prime Minister Nuri al-Malaki came under increased U.S. pressure to curb religious partisanship in his government. Obama notified Congress the United States was deploying up to 200